What's your favorite scary movie? This is Halloween Town. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Beetlejuice. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's a title one good scary. This is no redneck. No redneck is this creative. I don't know. Have you ever seen Larry the Cable Guy? Greetings and salutations, germs and spooks of the night. Uh, welcome to our Halloween double special feature that we'll be doing, um, where this week we are covering the Blair Witch Project. Too spooky. <laughs> I haven't um, seen this movie in a long time. <laughs> we should uh, first, as always, before I forget, go over roll call. So I'm going to pass it over to the pale bloodsucker on the left. Yes, hello, I am your neighborhood vampire spook, a geeky writer, who happens to love witches. Uh, and I know you can't see me, but I'm here, Crimson Maroon. And I am a character called a creature from the Sinister Lagoon. And I'm Sprinks. Oh, woo! I don't think that got cut up. Anyway, oh, if, you're, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that we're all uh, Halloweenified to look like uh, classic Universal monsters. Also known as Halloweenard, but whatever. And if you're listening audio only, because, you know, this is a podcast, uh, sorry for any uh, early confusion that has come across. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I guess we'll start with facts that I have about said movie. Um, I have you know, the initial kind of starting things, and then I got a couple... Uh, fun facts to go over. Uh, take them with a bit of grain of salt because I did get them off the internet, off of sites where they could be lies. I don't know. So Cite your sources. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wikipedia internet. and other things. Say that. Um, so the initial release date uh, for Blair Witch Project was July 30th, 1999. Um, some people believe it came out earlier, and that is simply for the film festival that it was debuted at, which was on the 16th, I believe, of July. Uh, the box office overall made $248.6 million um, with a budget that was roughly $300,000. Um, so you're saying they made a the... profit. <laughs> what was that, Ray? So they made a profit? Yes, it's it's made a profit. It, it was uh, roughly... $6,000. Yeah, I'm going to say roughly $300,000 because that's coming from a interview with one of the directors, but there are sites where it's anywhere between that and 500000 So no a actual numbers really stated. Uh, the runtime of the movie is an hour and 21 minutes, making it relatively short. And it is written and directed, and I believe also edited, by Daniel uh, Myrek and Eduardo Sanchez. And then a couple fun facts. Uh, first, the entire film's dialogue was improvised. The actors based their performances from notes that they received in film canisters. What? Which is yeah, which is a bit interesting because I figured that would greatly go straight to affect a uh, writer about film this movie. Film canisters. That's. Uh, uh, all right. Well, that explains some of my problems with this film. Uh, next fact, the actors started getting less food to eat towards the end of the filming to make them more uncomfortable in scenes. Well, that's, that's just abuse. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. No, that's how you get real acting. Well, I mean, yeah. it's true, but it, I mean, if, if they consented, I guess that's, you know. I mean, shop the job. They're getting paid. I, I believe, I didn't write it down my notes, but I believe there is um, a contract that I had to sign at the beginning, the three actors, to agree along with it. Uh, anyway, next fact, uh, the costume, de costume department and wardrobe for the film was solely on the actors' clothing themselves. Any tears had to be fixed by themselves of their outfits, which is why there's a scene of Heather hemming her pants. Hemming her pants? Uh, That's pretty cool. Four, yeah, the movie took eight days to shoot, where the actors got paid $1,000 a day. Editing, however, took eight months. Sounds about right. Yeah, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, the actors kind of got screwed <laughs> based yeah. off of the profits that they made from this. They did get residuals later on, oh, afterwards. Okay. But at the time, no. It was just that. <laughs> uh, next fact for if 
for any reason the actors had to break character while shooting, uh, all three actors would have to say a safe word um, to indicate that they were out of character, and the safe word was taco. Okay. Uh, next fact, a lot of lies were made to get the outcome of the overall project and the film. The actors were lied to about the legend of the Blair Witch, and the producers announced that the movie had real footage and that the actors had actually gone missing. Yeah, classic cannibal, cannibal holocaust type thing, yeah. All right. <laughs> and the last fact I have written down, which could be very variable, depending, but on the site I said the, uh, the F word is said 154 times in the movie. I can believe it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> they did say it a lot. What the fuck, man? That sort of thing. Yeah. Man? I'm quoting anyway. Josh. <laughs> yeah. Um, that those are the facts I have. Um, anyone want to give a little background on their connection to the Blair Witch Project before we dive on it? Starting with writer. Sure. Uh, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, so this is a nice. This is a bit of a refresher course for me. Um, I. It's hard to get me with horror. Um, I recognize that it's. Uh, this movie was very groundbreaking, I guess, for the uh, found uh, for the found footage genre and like the potential that it has. Um, I I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I didn't enjoy it as much uh, in my recent viewing that I did when I was a lot a lot younger. So there's that. Uh, it's pretty pretty short history because uh, I just um, it's not my typical like uh, horror movie that I like to go to. So. I'll pass this right along to Crimson. All right. My history with this film is that I saw it yesterday. Um, I Yeah, I, I haven't seen it before. Uh, the podcast told me to. Our, our darn bosses are like, you got to watch Blair Witch. Yeah, your managers uh, are assholes. <laughs> yeah. And I, I never played the video game. I, I don't think I even saw the trailer. There's the a video, video game? game? Yeah. <laughs> Came out. What, it's a pretty creepy game. It is. I think so. It's hard. It's hard around that. Uh, so, yeah, very limited overall for horror. I typically don't watch it. Kind of got scarred mm. on one movie as a child. Kind of kept me away from it. Unless others want me to watch things like Blair Witch. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. What about you, Sinister? Uh, it's actually a creature from Sinister Lagoon, but uh, whatever. All right, Sinister um, I watched this a really long time ago because it was just like kind of the gateway, like formally when you were a kid. It was you know watch the Boy Witch Project. Like, are are you grown up enough to continue to watch horror regularly? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm probably I'm I'm not as much of a baby as I used to be, but it's probably not my. I don't, you know, like, man, I really want to watch a horror movie right now. Um, I like the, I like the B movies and the, you know, vintage ones probably better just because it's less real. But um, so this is like probably like one of the first ones that I got exposure to. Um, so yeah, I, I, but I hadn't seen this in probably a really long time since then, and so this is probably my first viewing in a few years. Uh, and I mean, you can definitely see where it, why it took off and why it's kind of a touchstone still for you know making like a basically like a what a, quite a billion dollar industry of found footage. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess I'll pass, go then. Yeah, pass it off to the the, the wear springs. Um, I believe this is my third or fourth time. I've seen Blair Witch Project. First time I watched it, um, as I've described the movie, it's a broken jack-in-the-box. That's pretty much how it goes. I'm a big fan of thriller and suspense movies, which this movie did give me until kind of the end. Uh, so the first time I watched it, I was pretty disappointed. Second time I watched it, uh, I got a little more out of it. And I believe this last viewing I saw of it, I appreciated the movie more with the mindset of where I am now in my experience of film and everything. Um, 
whereas beforehand, I, you know, I was a little, little tween watching a scary movie. Um, but yeah, I, I think this movie is good for what it has, especially for how real it makes it feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can agree with that. It does nail the atmosphere, I think. And if no one else has any small talking points, we'll jump right into October 1994. Oh, I had one thing that didn't get touched on. All right, let's get out of October 1994. Go back to... Sorry, sorry, you had a a perfect setup there. I stepped on it. Um, The... We're not gonna we're not gonna talk specifically about it, but I, I would like to mention that originally, uh, when they technically had finished, uh, or pretty much had finished production of the movie, uh, they they gave it to Artisan Entertainment, I believe, is the uh, distributor or the uh, producing company or whatever. I believe and, that's right. Uh, yeah, and they they said, uh, yeah, the movie's pretty good, but we we don't like the ending, um, and I, I can't. I can't really find information on, or I didn't look into enough to find like, because there's a, apparently there was like three alternative endings before they they stuck upon the one that you know is now uh, iconic and parodied and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but so that was an, I thought that was interesting that it uh, technically was finished and had an entirely different several different endings before they actually picked the final one that you know is now. Like talked about all the time. Gotcha. Right now, all right. Do your spindly thing and set it up. All right, let me set up the time machine again. Going back to October 1994. <laughs> um, to keep it sounds so Wait, wait Doc, are you telling me you made a time machine out of a Blair Witch project? Well, I figured if you're gonna make a time machine, why not do it in a spooky style? There we go. Um. To go in the format, uh, oh, we'll kind of be going over that. days that have occurred in the film, uh, which is a total of eight days, so yeah. day and night Also, can connect uh, to technically, the film takes place in 1994. Uh, maybe check your facts. Thank you, random citizen. <laughs> um, Thank you, comic book guy. So but we're going to go with... Uh, <laughs> we, got, we got the beginning of uh, Heather, Josh, and Mike prepping for day one, interviewing some strangers... Uh, and Mar- uh, meeting up with someone named Mary who tells them a little bit about the witch before they go to a hotel to call it a night. And bang. No, they don't bang. But uh, whatever. I, I think the only thing that I would touch on before that that I thought was important was uh, we get to see their relationship between Heather and Josh. Like when, they, when he first gets out of the car, he immediately just starts filming his friend and they kind of run in circles around each other. I found that very endearing. Because, you know, that's what film students do for fun. Yeah. Not like I have any personal experience with that or anything. <laughs> no, you know, we don't. Never. Why are we even talking about filmmaking, guys? No, he, he writes. <laughs> Writers made it pretty clear he writes things. That's it. He, he doesn't the writer that. writes things. The writer, a writer writes. Um, yeah, no, it's a... It's an interesting because they, they I think they really I mean from the get go nailed the whole home movie found footage you know thing because it really does feel like you know you're wa- like watching old home movies or something mm-hmm. and you you know yeah I agree I think the actors did well uh, coming off kind of a, a real vibe yeah like there, there are moments later down the line in in the woods where where Heather <laughs> Her acting seems pretty darn real <laughs> yeah. at certain moments. Yeah. Um, Something that I prefer that they didn't do was they did, for the handheld, I guess, Heather's camera, the colored one, yeah. it didn't have all the battery life and the yeah. one time numbers. Like, none of that was on screen, which I think is way better uh, that it wasn't I there. I don't know. I feel, I feel like that would just be added visual clutter and would kind of take away, yeah. I think, from intense moments well yeah. plus when like you... like the parts where they're running through the woods if there was just like a green battery symbol yeah. and all these other things on the screen it would kind of take away well and it, it would That's be hard to yeah also have, like, uh, well yeah and you'd have to like have continuity all the time of like what the battery life should have been at that point and you know That's you also true. have to acknowledge the batteries yeah something yeah. i wrote down or i'm like 
they bought some extra batteries. There's no way they filled all this with one. one yeah. Battery. Well, I mean, in yeah, they, in, they, in they universe, about, yeah. in universe, they explain that they had, this footage was found. So honestly, the people who had a hold of the footage could have just theoretically edited it out. It's true. Well, actually, when you, I got, it's been a long time since I've handled like a camcorder from the '90s. But like, when it goes like on, like when you essentially like take it out, right, and you you put it, you know, you edit it or whatever, it doesn't have all that bar stuff, right? It yeah, have, sometimes. Like, it, it, usually, yeah. it doesn't. Um, but it, it's a, it's a setting that you would have to find fiddle with, I think. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thank God for the professional filmmakers who found this footage. <laughs> um, it's a slight fact that I'm not sure how real right. it is, but I believe what I what I saw is the, the people they yeah. the yeah ooh, uh the people they were interviewing in the town were actually actors um that the director the two directors kind of pointed in the direction mm. of uh heather josh and mike who at the time the actors did believe the whole story was real um to kind of just plant them to make yeah. make their con- subconscious believe yeah. that this is a real story Opposed to going up to all these people who have no clue what they're talking about. I mean, about. the the townsfolk people were like, that's honestly, that's a lot of like those like old fashioned like talking head documentary, you know. Yeah, style. it was it was a very excellent way to communicate the world building. Uh, so we were we were told the story in a of the Blair Witch and the, the mythology behind it without ever you know actually. Having met the Blair Witch up until that well, point, yeah. it was a very and smooth think, way to communicate it across. Well, and I think the best thing about it was also they gave kind of like um, differing points about it. Like mm-hmm. nobody could kind of no, none of like the stories really, with a few exceptions, really lined up to be like this is all connected. Which I think they were is, never cemented. Yeah, which is again like with like folk folklore and stuff that's kind of that's like authentic you know most of it doesn't really match up the st- you know because it's not really necessarily true stories yeah. so it doesn't really fit yeah compared to how mythology is written there's very many different interpretations or, or you know here here's an easy one the bible has very many different translations yeah yeah and which is all, actually they're all different <laughs> i guess right from that that's a slight kind of connection then because they do bring up um to one, one of the strangers they ask if he's religious uh, I like, guess yeah. to like connect that to yeah. do you believe in the Blair Witch like if they go hand in hand or connect in any way so I guess that's a small connection to make um, uh, yeah that, that particular guy said he didn't believe in the witch she, but he was religious yeah which uh, uh, it was a good blend between believers and non-believers I think yeah mm-hmm I think I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of the non, like maybe a little bit more non-believer, because most like the rest of them kind of. Yeah, it was a big wave of we, like. We do bro, have the yeah. we do have the. The people at the creek. We had the. We They're had, close, but yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, like the the kids are filming a documentary about the Blair Witch. Why would you interview someone yeah. who doesn't think they're real? That's true. That's true. Uh, well, they're, they're, down... they're, they're bad filmmakers. They're not giving all the points of view. Yeah, it's the first film. It's the first film. The the, do you think that child that the lady was holding was an actor or not? No, I wrote down a pretty good actor if they were an actor. The The child? Yeah, child. Where it kept touching her face. (laughs) I love that. Uh, Well, I think that was just actually the woman's the woman's kid, and the the directors were probably just you know hey see those people down the road they're trying to interview people by the Blair Witch here's $20 just go make up a tale so she's just telling this scary story about a witch I think the kid was actually getting scared <laughs> okay. yeah I, I just couldn't tell look at least at least at least a kid did not end up in a freezer truck okay true yes <laughs> that niche reference there <laughs> I, I figured you'd appreciate that one Crimson <laughs> I, I did um, I did yeah, they, the the three of them had quite some gusto to get this project done first night. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's be honest. Who's your favorite character so far? Uh, well, the, at the beginning, at this point, no. 
That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning, to go off of that, yeah. there is a question later that I'll bring up um, at a certain point. To that's kind of pretty much that same question. Okay. But but at this point right now, um, I don't know. I didn't even know Heather's name at this point. I I yeah, kept getting I didn't, Josh and Mike confused. I <laughs> I, I got I, I the only yeah the the main the main character Heather was the only name I didn't know or remember until halfway through the film. She didn't really say her name, really. Yeah, I mean you know, well, not until the whole yeah yeah stuff yeah. that they got lost. The wood but stuff. At this point, I'd say Josh. <laughs> I like Josh. You like his beard, his and his ponytail. I, I think I I like Heather. Through this first day, uh, yeah, Heather's probably my favorite. Relate, you, Heather's, pro- Heather. Heather's probably my favorite for the first day, um, though I think Josh will steal that from her as the story goes on. Um, anyone have anything else to cover after day one and night one? Isn't it interesting that she had a book on how to stay alive in the woods? Oh, that is true. That's, that's something. Whoa. Um. That was more than likely real because. Is that a real book? Oh yes, it's a real book. But I believe she actually, the actress uh, Heather at the time, because all their names are actual, the real names. Um, not actually true, but. Oh, it's not. I thought it was. <laughs> they 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 have Wikipedia pages that say the name of the characters, but they're not. Yeah, it's not actually. Oh, okay. Then that's a false fact. Believe, on my point. Yeah, I believe I didn't I didn't do as much research as you, but I'm pretty sure they're. Okay. Um, anywho, uh, the actress then for Heather, her parents didn't ca- like the fact that she's going out to film a movie in the woods with strangers, with a group of men. So they uh, allegedly bought her a knife to take with her, <laughs> um, okay. um, which ex- probably has the reason why she also has these books to, that she went over about how to survive in the woods and in case anything occurred. Oh, never mind. You were right. Sorry. <laughs> she the the actress changed her name, which is oh okay interesting. Uh, I didn't realize the depths they went to making this realistic. Oh yeah, I, def- oh, I yeah. definitely I definitely do appreciate that. So that is, that is one of the qualities of this movie that came across to me. Yeah, the director certainly messed with these actors. <laughs> A lot. Never has a director messed with actors as such as Stanley Kubrick and Alfred Hitchcock, as in Blair Witch Project. And uh, one of the worst things ever in this film. They showed marshmallows in a shopping cart, and we never got to see s'mores getting made. Oh, the so Vienna sausage, yeah. Oh, I don't think it's the Vienna sausages. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm on, I'm on your book page there and that was, that's a flaw of the film 0 out of 10 but, yeah, unrealistic that's a whole point knock just for <laughs> but, no s'mores but the, the, the great director did put her camera up to the marshmallows like two or three times and squish them on camera so yes I, I liked how that was all filmed because it, it felt like <laughs> it felt real yeah. But, yeah I got a possibly a question for all of you uh, mm-hmm. which was your favorite interview I uh, think that I like the old the old guy that they started with. The yeah, I actually I, knew his stuff. Yeah, that was sinister, I think the first old man. First old man. Because that honestly felt like it felt both like oh classic, you know, like oh this is like the guy who you know knows what he's talking about or something, you know, like cl- the classic movie trope. But mm-hmm. then with the whole found footage thing, it like made it seem even more believable or you know less of like a trope and more of just like a general thing yeah. i think his first interaction with them was very sincere how they were just talking about it and his face like caught, like he caught word of it yeah and then they noticed it and said oh you've heard of it yeah i i like that you know they have a like at this point they have a camera assigned for behind the scenes and a camera assigned for the documentary so like you know, when they first interact with him, you can see him on the, the colored camera. You can see their first reaction and them getting a permission from him essentially to do the interview, which would then they cut to black and white uh, of like asking him questions. Yeah. I, I like it's kind of a cop out, but I like the two guys at the creek. I was going to say the, the, the way they the bounced second, off each yeah. other was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. They're probably my second choice as well. So with 
that nice transition to Crimson. Let's go on to day two and night two, uh, which automatically starts with Heather looking at herself in the cam uh, in the mirror with the camera and saying, "Hello, welcome to day two, um, where we Whoa. have more tales of the witch from yeah. the the two fishermen. Uh, we have the uh, the sighting of Coffin Rock, and setting up camp in the rain." Coffin Rock. Uh, I, I wish it looked like a coffin. Uh, I mean, from the angle that was shown, it didn't. Were there any angles that made it look like it did? I don't uh, know. I've never been to Coffin Rock. Uh. Well, it's just Coffin Rock because people died there. And uh, uh, Okay, all right. I mean, it's quite the story. Quite the story. Guys were all connected and their intestines uh, yeah, were spalled out of there. It g- gave me the House of Jack built vibes. And uh, during the whole like Coffin Rock talk, there was a plane in the background. Do, do you think that was real or they put that in edit? It was it's probably real. No, that was real. Uh, I that imagine was that was real. I mean, planes back then were still any... very loud, so. Yeah, I don't think there's any practical uh, VFX that they used at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not well, that would have been just a soundtrack thing, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Springs, you just said they don't use any practical yeah. VFX at all. Did oh, you mean that they... Could, <laughs> did you I, mean I'm the other computer. way? <laughs> yeah, other way around. No, they use plenty practical. They didn't yeah. use any computer edited. That's what I meant. Oh, yeah, that's just Thank you, writer. That's, that's, just, that's just what happens, man. Mm-hmm. It's just what Look, sometimes anything you go on the boards, you get lost, okay? It just happens. That's true. Um, uh, anything more in-depth that you guys wanted to go over with the two fishermen since you brought them up? Uh, well, they had the believer and non-believer. And yeah. The non-believer just <laughs> kept digging into the believer. Yeah, I I kind of like the... I definitely really like their back and forth, for sure. Um, I felt like a real interaction that they just just happened to get on camera, which is always, you know, cinematic gold when you're filming a documentary or anything, really, if you fun, if you film something genuine. Uh, it was, well, it was classic because the guy was like, you freaking kid. He was like, what was that, sir? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's very, Heather is very, very straightforward, confrontational. Yeah. Well, yeah, you make a documentary, you gotta be. Yeah. You gotta be Michael Moore here. Come on. <laughs> well, it seemed, yeah, it seemed Heather was very much the front face narrative speaker mm-hmm. to go about it. Um, and then you had Josh, the cameraman, and, and then, then Mike, who did Mike, Mike the who audio. Yeah. yeah. I I kept. It took me a while because I I couldn't. I I kept. I wasn't. I was confused when they kept bringing up Dat. And I, I thought he, I thought they were saying dad or something. I was like, what, what the fuck are they talking about? And then I realized, oh, the audio, yeah. Oh yeah, that's important. <laughs> Yo, yeah, that's it's important for a movie, yeah, especially a documentary. It's all that. Yeah, and we, we get more description on what the Blair Witch kind of looks like from the, oh, yeah, the guy because we yeah. got it earlier from Mary Brown, which we didn't want to talk about. Again, I like though that they all. have like totally differing. Uh, accounts of what the, the Blair Witch is. Yeah, a woman f- without her feet on the ground or a gray puff of smoke coming out of the river or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or a hairy woman. Yeah, with her shawl. With a shawl. Yes. Which, Dude. what is she? Does, is that is that significant? I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll find out later in this film uh, what, the, what the witch looks like. Uh... I did like the the drive uh, into the woods. Uh, mm-hmm. Into the woods. Looked. It it looked serene, and creepy at the same time. Yeah. If you switch your brain to to creepy, it's like, oh, that's creepy. Switch it to serene. Oh, that looks pretty I nice. I'd like to go there. I immediately could hear the banjo strings being plucked as a. <laughs> and someone left like a, a bottled water or something on top of the car. On top of the car. <laughs> yeah. Also a very real thing. <laughs> yeah, nobody's ever going to find that bottle again. Well, the car was on the road. Or the car. Or the car. I really liked... Uh, 
uh, how they're reading in the uh, the cave or what? Or in, the like at, the, at, at the mouth of the alcove. Uh, it's yeah. one of my. Uh, I, I I really just like the scene. It help the documentary helps set the mood. You know. Oh yeah. Well, I especially like that it's very. If, again, it feels really authentic because she kind of she like flubs up and they you know in the beginning and then they keep going and then they just you know kind of like, I guess quote unquote keep it or you know whatever because mm-hmm. it feels very much like give it more real. Yeah, because I mean well, to them it is real. Yeah. Yeah, to them. I mean, like, I mean, yeah, like, if yeah. they were editing it, they would have edited that out. But Probably, they, yeah. but, but for like us seeing as a window into this behind the scenes of this documentary, it does make it feel very real. Because we've been on little, little film things, and that's that's a lot of what it is: it's flipping up lines, and then having to read to them later on. Oh, uh, I was on. Uh, maybe I don't think that was. I don't think this is the second day. Never mind. I like that the argument between. Uh, meters versus feet that amused me that was that was the first day yeah yeah, yeah. that was day one I'm yeah <laughs> meters versus feet it says meters on it yeah but it aren't the dark brown lines feet yeah but the meters are brighter no it was the, so there. the feet was white and, yeah, and the meters was brown oh so the way what doesn't really matter anyways but yes it was, it was amusing. because we're arguing about feet and meters now yeah, you feel very authentic. Uh, oh, oh my God, it's real. Uh, and of course, it starts to rain because no one, yeah. did, no one studied what the weather was going to be like. Or maybe yeah, they did. They, they just have rain here. They seem well, surprised it, by it. Uh, well, only, only the one guy has rain. Only Josh has rain gear, and he was like, "Thank, thank God, my mom brought me rain gear for my day." Um, because uh, Josh's right mom loves him, and she'll yeah, see him Josh again is, one day. One, ne- never. Again. <laughs> but uh, uh, again, it feels very. It's like, and I don't. You know, they they make they talk about it a little bit, like that they've done like scouting and everything. But it feels very much like nobody did any prep work, which is or the bare minimum. No, Heather prep work. did everything. So yeah, the bare, or, which is you know classic uh filming on location thing you know when you're, for an early filmmaker you don't really look into anything you don't really know how to do stuff so again uh, it felt very real yeah no farting in the tent yeah no don't fart you can't smoke in the tent but you can fart in the tent any which again i would rather have somebody fart in a tent than smoke in a tent <laughs> I, I guess i could agree with that if I had to choose, yeah, if I had to awesome. choose between a fart or smoke. I'd pick fart. Any last thoughts on day two? Uh, Mike is a prankster. Mike is a prankster. I don't know. What did Mike know. do in day two? Yeah, they hear voices that in night, though, right? Josh does. Josh says he heard two things, but he, he says he it heard, like, in the morning. One could have been a deer or something. Kathleen. And a cackling, and then Mike's like, "Dude, if I if I heard cackling, I shit myself." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, de- yeah. the deer was later. The remark. Yeah, I, I, he was, he was like, dead. one of them could have been just an animal or something, but the other one was, yeah, cackling. Or... Yeah, and Mike is like, I didn't hear a thing. I didn't hear a thing, what? dude. Um, so that that goes to morning of day three. So day three, night three is uh, Josh heard noises. Uh, Mike believes that they're lost. Well, they look at the map. They they uh, find. Oh yeah, sorry, you're, you're, going, yeah. you're right. Uh, they discover a pile of rocks. Uh, That's the, uh, certain the cemetery. areas. Yeah. Yeah, they seen a bit of Gilligan's Island around a uh, fire, and then more things go bump in the night. On a three-hour tour. Stop calling uh, him the captain. He's a skipper. True. Um, did you guys feel like when, so I think it's Josh knocks over the, uh, one of the, the grave the, marker yeah. thing. Do you think that was the beginning of it? They were fucked or do you think they were fucked from the very beginning? No, I, well, I, because, because, because Josh is specifically targeted, I think that was what specifically fucked him over. Okay. Yeah. I think they were screwed night one. 
I think the first day there, like if they went for a day, got back in the car and left, they would have been fine, nothing of it. But I think because they stayed the first night in the woods, that targeted them. Uh, well, I think the, the rocks, whole story is just the woods in general, right? So I, I think. Yeah. I think the rocks being knocked they, over made it indicate to Josh to get picked first or the main target out of the three. Because that was something I definitely. Sweet. Yeah, that was something I definitely missed. When I first watched this, you know, when I was younger, I, I mm-hmm. totally forgot about it. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I did, and then it just made me wonder. I was like, I wonder if that was, like, the impetus for it or if it was destined to happen and that just made him a target. Yeah, I I, I caught that on my rewatch as well uh, for, for this podcast. Uh, that's something new that I didn't catch as a kid. Uh, uh, I guess I got a general question. Uh, general question. Why, 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 why do you think the witch waited? It is oh, screw them. Yeah. Oh, I assumed the witch was just like hoping that they would leave her territory, and when they didn't, she's like, "Oh well, oh boy, oh howdy, here I go, kill it yeah, again." Scared, oh, I think she was giving them chances. I I, I do the no, first... no, because it's weird because they were kind of like, like the day after, or like on the second day, they were pretty much like lost and couldn't get out. So I do think they they she was trying to give them chances. Up until, uh, obviously, uh, I think the three gravestones show up, which is not in the yeah. second day. Um, no, that's on the third day. Uh, Could have made an arrow out of rocks. Yeah. Them get out. <laughs> arrow out of rock, yeah. yeah, it's um, interesting. I mean, they're, they're yelling constantly about a map, so she's like, okay, they're not lost. Yeah, they'd be stupid to not know where they are with a map and a compass. Yeah, yeah. it is weird. It because they have they show the map at a couple points, and they're not even on any trails. Uh, like that's true. There there are no trails. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. like they're not even like it, I don't understand. Like that was like okay, not like me being like a nitpicky, but just like in the story, it's like how do you how are you supposed to know where you're at if it's just all like woods like. And it's not even, like, a real landmark map. It's just, like, a map of woods. Yeah. I mean, I guess the only indication they could really go off of was the the stream mm-hmm. and how guess, close yeah. they were to the stream. That's true. That's, the only, that's, like, literally the only thing on the map, really. It's, yeah. like, or it's different. Well, and then also the compass kind of helps keeping them. Yeah, that's true. Within, the, presumably, a grid on the map. Yeah. I, uh... As soon as they complain, or I think it was in this day that Heather. Yeah, second day, like yeah, yeah. with the cemetery. Yeah. yeah. Or day three. Yeah. No, it was when they were start because they no, it was when they were going trying to find the cemetery, and they kept bringing up that they were lost, and then they you know find the the you know they end up finding it you know so you can't really say whether they were lost at that point or not. But no, um, but wasn't wasn't that day three? That's day three. They didn't find it till day three. Yep. Hmm. Well, day one they were still in town. Okay. Well, in day four is when they get the uh, stones outside of their tent. Yes. Yeah. I said day three earlier. Um. <laughs> but, but but I think it might be this uh this day, the day that we're on is when they talk about taking off the map shortcuts because yes. Heather knows the way. On the map, yeah. As soon as I heard that, that was a red flag to me. Uh. That's a major. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there was like, yeah, we we love shortcuts, right? Because they're faster. And was it uh, Mike that was like, I I love level grounds while they were hiking up a hill. <laughs> and they would get wet. Yeah. Um, is it also this day where they come across the dead mouse and like, what killed this mouse? Witchcraft. And then Josh is in the background saying, "How about God?" <laughs> Uh, no, I, I think, think so. Yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah, probably yeah. that. That that was a that was in that was a interaction that made me smirk. Um, something I liked in day three was probably my favorite camera shot that came out, and especially for these people who think they're just filming a documentary mm-hmm. and believe the story and everything. It was oh Heather Ping. No, no, it was creative that I, uh, Josh did this, but there's a part where Heather has her head tilted in the morning, um, and Josh does a Dutch angle to match the head tilt to make Heather look level, but everything around her tilted. Which I really liked. It made it made 
Heather, you know, stand out even, but the world off. Ah, uh, nice. Nice, nice. Missed that no, one. Nice going, Josh. Nice going, Josh. Um, and then they had a nice little campfire. Talked about Gilligan's Island, um, which was just a nice little bonding. Um, yeah, I think still this keeping would... cool headed. Yeah, uh, because Mike thought they were lost. They gave them Mike the map and he, uh, the map yeah. to Mike, and he just called it useless. And it was like Greek to him. <laughs> um, it was like Greek to me. Yeah, which I wrote down right there. It's like he called it specifically to Heather and Josh that to him it was useless. Which is to you, it was letter. useless. To me, it yeah. made perfect sense. Um, and then more noises in the night, which now they all hear. I mean, Mike is just like, tired, Twigs but backing and rocks being thrown. Yeah. Is this yeah. the is this the first night where they all get up and go out of the tent and start shouting after, like, yeah. "Hey, would you yeah. come out and introduce yourself?" Yeah. I don't think Mike comes out of the tent. No, he, doesn't he doesn't come out of the tent, but he. No. They all. Josh all Heather. Heather. He's like, I don't hear anything. I just don't hear anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hear assuming Mike was just trying to capture the audio. Like yeah. the, well, they were like, we want you out of the tent so you can actually capture like the audio. And he's like, no. Yeah, Heather, no. Heather said, if anything's going to happen, I, I want it. I want it on film. I want it recorded. Uh, um, is Mike a friend or someone hired for this documentary? I assume he's yeah. a friend of Josh. Heather just hasn't met him yet. Yeah, and they That's hired him for the film. Yeah, because he said he agreed to do the project because he thought they scouted ahead for the project. Who? Like, okay, so you sound remind hired me, on. Yeah. Remind me in day one who made fun of like um, Mike's mom? Was that Josh? When they went to pick Heather. him up. I don't Heather made it. It might have been Josh. Oh, when, when they were when they were picking him up. Yeah. Oh, All that right. was Heather. Are you gonna? Yeah, you gonna? You're gonna meet your mom. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that helps with a friendship of knowing beforehand, but it does feel like Heather. This was like Heather's first kind of interaction yeah. meeting Mike. Yes. Yes. So, just seems like an interesting comment to try to break the ice meeting someone. But okay, yeah, and well. then um, anything else with day three? Uh, that they crossed the creek. On, on a fallen over tree, and no one fell. I'm so disappointed. Yeah, and I think this is the only one of the only times in the movie where the audio is after recorded and doesn't match what's being said in yeah what's being shown. Yeah, there's a couple. Of, well, there's a couple of times. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's more later on, obviously, but but I think this was the first notice I wrote down. Um, yeah, where there's footage. This is where they. Around. This is yeah. This is also the day where they cross the creek. This is what we were just talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they cross over. Uh, and the, uh, I guess good. At, at the cemetery, the seven stones. I think was, there's was that just the seven dead kids. That was the, the seven dead day? kids. Yeah. 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 The uh, Indian burial ground is what they called it. Yeah. Um, the I noticed to they, one of the stories. I noticed. Oh, that yeah, the, we, we didn't talk about one of the stories. Uh, the hermit guy who, who supposedly murdered like seven kids. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and went to town and said he was all done. Yeah, he was all finished. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Yeah, right. Are you were going to say something? Yeah. No. There was they they established uh that there was because of the argument over the map that they 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 just have some there was some trust issues with each other, um but they kind of worked through it. You know, just by talking, and I appreciated that because you know that's what you do in real life is you work out your kinks in relationships and stuff like that. Yeah, which I think helped strengthen that night campfire scene. Yes, because they were all you know level with each other, and just you know talking about Gilligan's Island, you know, just making conversation. Yeah, because they um, they they're like oh we'll solve it. They did they know that they were lost at this point, or, or they uh, had a feeling well, they, they were questioning Heather. Because she kept changing the time, estimated times. Oh yeah, because they were they kept constantly like falling behind. Like they they had, yeah. the 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 burial ground is right up ahead, like in, like a half an hour away, and then like we got there five hours later. Got it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing that they found that place, considering Heather's navigation skills. Um, 
But yeah, she, and then she, there's she more put all noises, points into charisma. That's... Which we talked about. And then we got day four, which is pretty short, I think, compared to all the other ones. Um, day four, it's them getting lost again, and this time Mike is pretty mad about it. Um, more noises <laughs> at night, and that's when the comment is brought up that it could be a deer, I guess. Yeah. Which there's no deer. way it was a deer. <laughs> it could have been. Cause Wasn't it whispering this night as well? Yeah, the twig snapping off in the distance, I guess that's fine to be a deer, but the sound of, like, people throwing rocks against trees and the whispering, that's, yeah. Yeah, I I wrote that was uh, tree smacking, which is a dead giveaway of Bigfoot. So this is clearly a Bigfoot story. This is a Bigfoot, yeah, especially with the hairy lady. Yeah, with the, the, the hairy creature. How crazy would that be if it was actually Bigfoot? I mean, there's no, there's nothing saying it isn't because yeah. we never saw. <laughs> there's, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no, there's nothing oh. standing against that. Yeah, this this could be a Bigfoot story because I watched like the first three seasons of Finding Bigfoot and it all lines up here. Yeah, this is like classic Bigfoot. Yeah, the Bigfoot the, I mean, gifts is... at campsites. I mean, seeing it. Yeah, I but mean, there's no footprints. It. Well, they didn't no, look there's around no tracks. They, yeah, they didn't look around. That's true. They're three film kids. They're not yeah. tracking down Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be, fair, to be fair, it's not that difficult to spot tracks. So. Yeah, they're not going to look The man has a point. They're, they are not going to look for them. I agree with that. But I mean, like, it would be noticeable, especially if you went to bed in a central location with your tent and you would you would notice what tracks were not yours, pretty much. It'd be very obvious. Well, that we're trying to debunk the foot that uh, Bigfoot theory here. I mean Well, I think they could have ignored it with the rain. They should have ignored it. it. Filled up with mud and could not be seen ever again. Who knows? Um, yeah, they they said it sounded like footsteps outside and I replayed him like is that footsteps? I don't hear really any footsteps at all. It's a, this sounds like wood banging. There's definitely some. There's definitely wood some banging. noises we are not privy to as the audience. Yeah, I heard twigs snapping, the wood banging, um, which had an echo effect, which is why I thought it was a rock, because it like bounced. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just like a one noise. It was a an echo kind of sort, and then the light whispers. Um, but it was that night. So as I as I said earlier, I think this was the shortest film day. Well, yeah, we we get Heather saying it's hard to get lost in America. You got yeah. deforested uh, the whole place. <laughs> yeah, classic. Uh, yeah, classic Amazon rainforest uh, propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, she brings that up a few times in this. <laughs> That's it's America. And it's hard to get lost. She's as a defense for getting yeah. lost. <laughs> Um, and I guess any other touching points on day four, night four? Um, I remember, I think it was in this one because this is the one where they were like looking around as well, like heavily, the most of the Heather crew. Heather and Josh Mike, Mike was also sitting outside the tent to help record audio. Um, I think this was also, cause I, I watched, uh, for rewatch, I watched it with subtitles. The subtitles that came up said, uh, ethereal whispering in the dark. Quite literally. Ooh. And I'm like, I don't hear the whispers at all. But okay. Yeah, there, I also had subtitles on. And there were moments like that where, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, w- w- whispers in the background. Like, oh, there were whispers. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Huh. I didn't watch it with subtitles. That's interesting that it gives you more hints or more things. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I felt because, you know, I typically when I watch a film, I watch it first time without subtitles just to experience the film as it's intended. And then I rewatch them yeah. with subtitles just to make sure I catch all the dialogue and whatever else is going on. Which so. is quite helpful for this movie because it's at times pitch black and silent. Yes. Yeah, there's so. probably like a good uh, like five or ten minutes of a black screen. Probably. <laughs> Accumulatively, uh, probably. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, this uh, is the day where the map gets miss- missing, right? Yeah, day four. Yeah. yeah. The one more time. What was it? This is the day the map gets lost. Um, day five. 
Yeah, day four is yeah. realization that they're lost. Day five is when the map yeah. is. Yeah. That's pretty so, sure it got lost after the they found the cemetery. Well, on day four they still had the map, um, and kind of stated that they were lost again, which just really ticked off Mike. Um, but now going on to day five, day five uh, they open up their tent to find rocks outside their tent. Um, the map is missing. Uh, the wet shoes that happened. Josh explained the current situation to Heather. Mike tells them what happens to the map. Uh, we got the symbols. We got noises of the tent shaking and child laughing and running into the woods. That's all day five. Uh, okay, this is the day with the American line then. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the rock piles to start off with, which shows a visitor actually came. It wasn't just out in the woods. It actually has come up to their tent now. Um, so it knows where they are. Um, do you, which kind of gives me the question, do you guys think that the Blair Witch or the thing that's stalking them is mm -hmm. nocturnal? Uh, I think it's nocturnal only to a point in that like it knows that they're asleep. Yeah, okay. I mean, that, that's because probably it doesn't do anything during the day. Because there's a lot of predators that just hunt at night, but are also awake during the day. So I, yeah, it's not really something I thought about. Okay. Uh, yeah, if, if I were the the three of them seeing three piles of rocks, I'm like, oh, we're, we're marked for death now. Please. Please. Yeah, like I said, at this point, at the, the sea, like at, 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 once we reach that point, I'm like, I'm just going to retrace our steps exactly to go to the car because we are clearly not they needed are or not wanted. They are confident enough for that, so that's not on the table. Um, ben has a point. Yeah, no, I agree. They are really dumb. But even though it's a very something, simple thing to do. Something that's automatically a red flag to me that pointed out was when they were discussing where the map was, and it was Heather and Josh talking to each other, and Mike said, like, Nothing. Yep. Mike barely talked. Dude, come on, guys. Just, just tell me. Come on. Just tell me. Yeah. I know that, that was like an automatic flag to me. It's like, oh, wonder who, uh, wonder what the map is. Uh, um, yeah, the but it's, map also, is, it's so also nice and subtle because Mike's already mad, and discussing back the Mike, uh, the map would probably just him yelling. So it's. Okay. Yeah, is, it is, is the fact that he didn't even lie or cover up for himself. Or... I, I I like how Mike Mike is like just like snap so quickly. It's just like, guys, come on! I just want to go home. Yeah. Cold. I'm hungry. I'm out of smokes. Yeah, that, that's something I wrote down where like the first few days was Mike freaking out, and then it turned to Josh freaking out, yeah. and Mike being the calm one. Yeah. Well, and I and Heather that, freaking out. That well, making sense. Well, that happened. Heather, Heather worked for me throughout. Her. Yeah, Heather worked for me as well. I think uh, I needed more for uh, Mike to throw the you know to throw away the map as he later reveals one. And I think I I understand a little bit where Josh because his stuff was the one that was covered with all the goo and no one else's yeah, was. He, yeah. So Classic, I think uh, that's that's enough for me to hit. Topic. That's enough for I think him to freak out a little bit. Um, I, I agree with that. Uh, it was just the role reversal of Mike. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was a hundred percent one eighty. I don't think I liked that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Josh explains the whole, pretty much their whole situation to Heather to calm both yeah, of themselves. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Stop that's, filming. That was the main, like, the documentary's over. Documentary's over. Stop. No more black and white footage. Uh, and and they, they come across a stream again. I don't think it's the same one at this point. No, no. it's a different um, one. And I wrote down my notes. So if you're 100% lost and have no idea where you actually are in, uh, in any connection to any direction, follow the water. All the current, yeah. Yeah, it's a very simple uh, thing. They kind of did that. I don't know. They, they didn't they talk about they were doing that, and then it seemed like they stopped. No, they, they didn't necessarily each follow. One they came across. They never they trusted. Followed it. They trusted the compass over the stream, which, which is, is classic. Uh, yeah, which is true. You know, you should trust the compass more than you do a stream, but this compass 
uh, I guess my working theory, and this is 100% me writing the script for them, because there's nothing to indicate this, I assume the compass is just constantly pointing at the house at the end. Because that's yeah, the, that's the like, only way they could go in circles. I was like, they had to be super incompetent, or there's some magic witchy thing going on with that compass. Yeah, like that's, that, that's uh, the only... question I was going to bring up. That is the only Do way you... that that would functionally work with how yeah. with in the script is that the compass and... is just the north point is just going to be at pointing at the house so either either way in those regards that the compass is pointing to the house or affected do you think the witch at all had any magical power that occurred if we're going with the witch affect the compass then yes or there's a giant electromagnet in that house <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, affecting the compass, affecting their minds, anything in that regard, or do you think it was just them well, getting tired? I mean, and... It could be minds where they, the witch projected the compass in a certain direction in Heather's mind, but that's this is all just nothing that the writers gave us. So well, the, way no portrayed, yeah. the way it's portrayed, yes, is which is Heather which is which is why which is why Heather ended up being an idiot, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, that was just a question of mine. I didn't know if you guys thought that there was any magic that the witch was doing. That's how I would excuse it, but I don't. But know we have nothing to work with, for. so I'm not going to put anything in mm -hmm. here because. Okay. It's not that's a, that's not something I, like I can I guess objectively work with because there's nothing to work with in that regard. Uh, all right. Because at this point, we know Heather is terrible at tracking and stuff. Uh, so and she was, and she's the one. She's the one with all the survival books too. The survival books, and on Sundays she goes on hikes in the woods. Oh fuck! I, I forgot I wrote about that, that. Down, I'm like that. That made her pretty dumb. If that's something she actually does on the regular. Yeah, um, I can agree with that. Um, I want to bring up the part of the wet shoes. Heather getting her shoes wet. The part about the witch shoes. And Mike and Josh laughing at her because of it, which I think is the breaking point or tilting point of them, of this is still funny that it happened to you, but we are lost and getting a little hysterical, you know, trying to just get out of here. Yes. At that point, you're, just, at that point you're yeah, just laughing at hysterical. anything to cheer yourself up. Yeah. So yeah. I, I assumed either hysteria or they're just... They had to take it in stride because they have nothing else going for them in that moment. So I think that was the tilting part. Uh, yeah, to indicate Heather, the three of them, I guess. But Heather brings up again. All right, since you guys think this is all fun and games, you guys actually have the map, right? I'm like, oh, Heather, you just opened up a big can of worms. And in fact, she did. And in fact, <laughs> yeah. she really did. So we can go on to Mike tells them what happened to the map. Yeah. Now this is yeah. where Mike turned into a terrible character. Yeah, okay. I can agree so, with that. I will say at this point now, with where all three of them are, if you were there, if you were like a fourth in this mix of three, mm -hmm. who would you stand by as the leader? Um, like, at this point, the person who's done the least wrong is Josh. He didn't get us. He didn't fucking lose the map, and he also didn't constantly claim that he knew where he was going i, I agree josh even asked for the compass josh even asked for the like, compass because both Mike of you lost is... the map you took us in the wrong direction yeah. and lost so uh, give it to me i do think at this point josh would be my de facto leader in this group yeah i'd agree with that okay um, i also agree with josh i was just curious because they all had like Different at this point, all three of them had different mindsets on how to get out of there, kind of. Mm -hmm. So I was curious, like, which one would you lean more towards? Heather's pride and ego killed these people. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, assuming so, there was no witchy mojo in her head, which uh, we don't have any proof of. Yeah, uh, which we have nothing to work with in regards to that. Um, I will say also, I think Mike throwing away the map is a little too much too quickly like yeah, I, I, th I thought it was just the witch token i'm like okay fine 
Yeah, the, the, I, 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 I assume the witch took it as well, which is why when he admits to throwing it out and it, like he he's the one that got rid of it, I find that as a problem to a degree because the the film has not convinced me in, in, enough that he is hysterical enough to have reached that point. I'm okay if he eventually did that, but there was not enough that had happened to him in order for him to want to throw the map away. Yeah, so at yeah, that point, point it allow that Even if yeah, at that point it would have been about 48 there. hours of him trusting or i guess putting trust into heather to get them out and they've just been lost this whole time and the map means nothing to him he said that on the first day of like trying to get out and... no he, no what he said oh, he said he can't understand it. no what he said he can't yeah, understand it's it. useless it's useless to him yeah but to to him he I was like well, yes it's right useless now. to him to his own <laughs> mindset is just useless in general because it's not helping or getting any progress with what he's seen so it gets rid of it which gets heather into screaming at him like yes it was useless to you but not to us yeah like i said i'm i think of it's it's, it's fine for sure for that to be the ultimate conclusion the problem is that he had not reached the point enough where his hysteria would have pushed him to that yeah so I, uh, I, I, so I fact, that would have been been more, I think, because uh, this is day four, right? Uh, we are currently on day five. We're on day five. Um, the map got lost this morning of day five, which also mm-hmm. is an interesting question that they had the map beforehand. When did Mike throw the Take map in, in the creek? Yeah. yeah. Did he do it during day five or d- during day four? Uh, he would have had to do day? It, He would have had to do it during day four. And I have no idea okay. at what point they would have given him the map when he said, ah, "I looks like Greek to me." Yeah. No, I don't think they gave it to him. I think he definitely took it out of Heather's bag, but I just don't know what point that was. I don't it know if that was Heather pants. using the restroom. I don't know. He said it was by the creek is where he threw it, so it's probably some he didn't say time. He, it, it, well, he didn't use interesting words. He didn't say he threw it. He said he kicked it into the creek. Actually, Actually when they kicked. crossed the creek on the first one, Something fell, and how he's like, what fell? And someone said, oh, nothing fell. Is that the man? Oh. That could have been. Oh, look, at, look been. at Crimson there. But wasn't that just, day I don't remember if that three? was earlier. I don't remember. Yeah, what I don't, that, was, that was earlier. But they didn't have the... She wouldn't show him the map, though, after that, right? Yeah, no, they... No, I think that, but, that was the... That was their first creek crossing where something fell. Yeah, okay. So they, they, had they, the had, the, they had the map before. after that. Yeah. Yeah. Other show was I had the map on day four. Oh. So it was sometime after the Can't map was shown help. on day four to yeah, I guess I, beginning I of day five, which I don't believe was the morning of day five. There's no way Mike got up before the two of them, took the map, walked out, didn't do anything with the rocks outside to go throw it and come back. Yeah. So like there's no room for that. No. Um so then we'll go on to the iconic symbol of the movie and uh, the part with all the hanging wood symbols in the trees. Guys, there's all this voodoo stuff over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all this voodoo shit. Like, there's all this food and, and shit. Like he, try, like, he jokes about it. Like, there's a bunch of cool stuff. And they got down there and it's hmm. terrifying. It's cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, good old, my good notes, old, this good is old where rune. hope is dying. Good old runecraft. Love it. Yeah. yeah. And I just don't... everywhere. Does anyone know what the symbols are? I think they're the Blair Witch symbol. I think they're Celtic. Oh, okay, thank you. Very helpful. Yeah. I think they're Celtic, if... but I'm not sure. I'd have to double check. Uh, that. it's. I think it's like, um, it's reminiscent of like, uh, yeah, voodoo stuff. <laughs> <It would> end... <laughs> Thanks. It's definitely no, a I'm, body, right? Okay, so no one knows no. anything. Okay. That's Wait, uh, it's, it reminds me of Celtic because it reminds me of Celtic, but I don't actually know. The, but I do say like there, it reminds me of Celtic uh, runes and iconography symbols that they have. Yeah, Crimson. I do not actually know. What was the question? What the symbols meant? What they were? Oh, I don't think they actually have like any meaning. I think they're like supposed to be like just like ritualistic. Original for the film. Not no, not like that. But um, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think they necessarily themselves have any particular meaning. It's all based on the um, intent of the uh, person who makes them. 
Oh, speaking of intent, that is a great segue to why do you think it's in this area, all centralized and not spread throughout the woods or anything? I think this could be an area that not, it's not shown because it's not around, but I think this is an area that could be close to the house. Co-director mm-hmm. Sanchez told WatchMojo's the symbols what? act as portals. This oh. means that once the students see the stick figures hung around their tents, they're not escaping the witch or the forest alive. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> there, there's Thank our. Thank you, there. Watch Mojo. <laughs> hmm. uh, that is, I guess, with an interview they had with the actual co-director. So. So it's a means to keep them trapped. I guess. They actually never found one outside their campsite, right? No. If, no, the wa- if, the watch, if the Watch Mojo symbols act as a portal, that could explain why they suddenly just appeared back at the same creek, though. The problem is that's not really explained in the film. This is extra related material, well, therefore it can well, be excluded. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't necessarily make sense that they're heading south, continuation, and it you turn them. Yeah, the like, creek. I mean, like, at a certain point, there's, like, because... C- Technically, we're taking on a ride here. We're not in control of the story, and you know the characters themselves aren't, you know, in control. Yeah. So at a certain point here, you know, like we we're we're given we have to be like, okay, well, even an inexperienced hiker can't like be going south for hours and manage to get turned around somehow. Like that's just yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's no way it's impossible. I think it could be kind of like a pleasant fill scenario. Where it's like, what's at the end of Main Street? It's like st- the the top of Main Street. Like if you just continue in that direction, you'll just be back at the top. So maybe it's like that's where they are now. Like that's their the forest. Yeah. So yeah, if they go too far, I mean, they're just automatically on the other opposite end, still going that direction. Uh, which yeah. I have played the Blair Witch video game, which does which that as came well. Came out came yeah. out about like twenty years later. So they can come to yeah. <laughs> but in the game, yeah. if you do walk in one direction, like if you're at a campsite and you walk in one direction, you will initially come back to that same campsite you were just at. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, okay. I guess a more movie-based example that I could think of is yeah, yeah, probably yeah. Coraline, uh, where the the other mother's world in Coraline is so small that eventually you walk around the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Just I mean, yeah, yeah. Like again, I think the problem with a couple of these, or you know, or the main issue, you know, with we're having it where they're not stuff isn't being explained is that technically we're dealing with quote unquote like unreliable protagonists where they're not familiar enough with anything that they could possibly you know be like. I feel like if they went out of the way and be like, oh we're in a time loop scenario or something that would it would be quite a fucking leap yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. so like any kind of level of like explanation would sort of kind of ruin the i guess plot of you know or you know if it came to some sort of like concrete decision conclusion they're all they're all unfamiliar with the symbol or anything the the piles of rocks or usually anything that they come across because none of them have been studying the Blair yeah, Witch. Pretty much. They got all their information from the strangers they interviewed. Yeah, pretty... Well, because they do have a book, a quote-unquote, uh, you know, quote-unquote book about the Blair Witch, but th- th- at least, like, the main thing they have is about Coffin Rock, which is the only thing we really have, like, concrete on that we know that they've read about because they, you know, talk about it in the movie. And, and they're it actually visited, like so... Yeah, but it seems like with all this other stuff, they have no idea what it is and, you know, are, are totally kind of out of their uh, depth, as it were. So, I think there's... I mean, granted, with a few of, like, you know, de- definitive, like, you know, hiking tactics and, you know, experience uh, things, there's a little bit... Well, there's enough leeway here where you could be like, okay, believably, they would have no fucking clue what's going on, I guess. Yeah. But I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna totally throw out the, you know, lack of... Uh, hiking experience here uh, uh there is a level where with us now knowing their portals even though they don't directly say it in the film it is true that no one's that stupid to be walking south all day and going backwards so 
it is safe to assume there is some mystic stuff going on. Yeah, I think some some level of supernatural is happening. Unless the compass is like they're just following the compass, and the compass is slightly like turning them in a big semicircle. That's the other thing. Yeah, to, to be but fair they, to them, as a as a hiker, you follow the compass until you know the compass doesn't work, and then you follow the yeah. You know, but I'll lean more towards what Crimson said, simply for the yeah. fact that when they come across the creek again, it's the same log. Yeah. It Otherwise, has, it would it, just be farther down the creek. Yeah. So, in that regard, there has to be something mystic. Um, which, I guess, helps the film a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, I think they do it well enough where they're, like, okay, most of the stuff we're talking about doesn't occur until probably, like, the last, like, 30. Day six and seven. Yeah, 30 minutes. I think well, the cool thing about this movie, though, at this point we're at, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit, is that you, you're kind of left, you don't really have a concrete idea of what exactly is happening um, as far as, like, the malevolence, you know, mm-hmm. of, the, you know, the, the villain or, you know, whatever. You, it, it could, you know, it's enough where it it could be a bunch of townies that are, you know, trying to scare them. It could be like, you know, some cultish thing or something. Could be a Blair Witch. You know, or, you know. It could be Bigfoot. Yeah, it could be Bigfoot. Yeah, we could, it could even be Bigfoot. So, it's, I, I, which is like, you know, again, the best monster you can come up with is one that the audience makes themselves. Because, you know, nothing, you know, a person's imagination is far greater than any actual, you know, thing you can show on screen. Well, well guess, you know, actually, more no. Yeah. no, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, there's definitely a spot for the audience not knowing creatures that, that can definitely be beneficial. Uh, I was going to branch off into more of the kind of portal talk where why doesn't it affect other people? Like, we, we find out that a year later the footage was found, which means someone went to uh, that there's house. A whole, there's a whole, um, they did a whole, like, a lore or whatever for this movie before it came out. So there's, like, a whole website that had a bunch of information that isn't in the movie. Mm-hmm. And so apparently the footage, like, all, like, a bunch of, like, their possessions and the cameras and everything was found in, like, the decrepit basement of a uh, 100-year-old cabin. Not the building that they ended at? Or? I believe so, yeah. The moon. Um, um, okay. that's, that's my best guess is that it wasn't left where it was, it was moved All right. oh, and then there's also the stories of like Coffin Rock where uh, people have entered these woods to investigate mm-hmm. disappearances but those people come back like, oh, I, don't think I, I, I assume, yeah, don't, I assume yeah. what sets them apart is none of them disturb the graves well, none of them, none of them disturb the graves, and it seems like for a bunch of them, they're not out there for very long, with the exception of that the the story that um, one of the uh, fishermen says about the lady who disappeared for three days and then came back. Yeah, these people are. They, I presume search parties aren't camping overnight out in the woods. They go until nightfall and then turn back, get back in their cars, and come back the next day. Yeah, like at that point you would do grid searches. Okay, we're going to search this part today. We're going to search this part tomorrow. Search this part the next day. I suppose. Just depends on how much time someone's in the woods, I guess. I assume assume the only reason they would target our characters is because of they accidentally disturbed the graves. I guess I couldn't really get a good grasp until seeing the later films because I... Assume that in these later films, people are gonna die. Uh, yeah. But is each team in those later films also gonna knock over rocks? That's that's just something I I guess I I, don't I to think see I don't know if it was so much us the, know because like, none yeah. of us have seen those yeah. movies. Yeah. I think with the rocks and everything, that might just you know again. There's a bunch of stuff that happens that kind of just creates like this is um, just this is just me writing the fact, script yeah. for them. I don't yeah, know what well, it actually is. <laughs> well, again, no, like, like I, I'm saying, not even in that way of like. Josh knocks over the rocks, and then he's specifically targeted, which then creates this sort of tension and this, you know, kind of fear 
specifically in him, and then everybody else is sort of more calm. I mean, they're all freaked out, but he's the most freaked out because stuff is happening to him that isn't happening to anybody else. And then, you know, and then we see later on with, you know, something similar kind of happens with Heather that doesn't happen to Mike, you know, and it's kind of this, it's creating kind of a separation in the group so they become easier targets later on individually, I think, is a, is a big factor of that. I don't know if it's specifically the thing that makes them tar- or a target overall. I think kind of, I, I agree earlier with Ryder is that just, basically being in there for as long as they've been in there, they have made themselves targets. And, you know. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I guess with this, we'll move on to night five that night. Night five? Where we have more apparent noises of what occur. The same noise is pretty much from night four, right? Yeah, but now we actually have, like, child laughing. Child noises. I I had to make sure that that was, like, yeah, I had, to, I had to make sure that was happening on the TV and not in real life. <laughs> and uh, the tent getting shaked. Oh, that, yeah, Which that to me I, might be the scariest part of the movie for me. That's probably, the, yeah, I like. Yeah. I almost had like a little jump scare because I didn't expect it. I, I had to go back and rewatch that scene because I couldn't tell if that was someone on the outside shaking or Mike freaking out kicking the tent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Did you come to a conclusion? Uh, it was outside. <laughs> oh, soccer yeah. blue. Yeah. Um, so I guess it was a little diminished from me because I couldn't tell what the heck was going on. Um, uh, one thing I do like about this night is I like that Heather's shivering when she's holding the camera. It's a nice touch because yeah. she was complaining about the cold. It's so cold. Oh, yeah. It's so cold. And then uh, when the tent gets shaked, they just book it out of the Oh, yeah. They, they sprint. Yeah, they, and she's getting like, she says, like, oh, my God, what is, you know, what is, and you don't get to see it. What is that? Yeah. Oh, what, what, what is that? <gasps> um, which I believe, I, I it was one of those um, rumorous facts that I wasn't sure it was completely real. So I didn't yeah. share it at the beginning. But there is the possibility that what Heather actually saw was one of the directors in white uh, painter oh. gloves. And pantyhose over his face, running through the woods. Sounds about right, yeah. Well, that's just rude, but it got that's a good just, reaction. That's just, that's just rude. Yeah. That's Stanley Kubrick yelling at Shelley Duvall before a take rude right there. That's uh, a real thing. Yeah, and then they don't, they don't go back to camp. They find each other, because I guess they just uh, and they hunker straight down. And they, yeah, and they turn off their all lights. Turn off their everything. lights and then just stay together and stay awake Which until is, yeah, a weird I, you know weird thing to be out in the open be safer than going back to the tent uh, <laughs> well yeah especially because one could think night or uh, nocturnal stuff is happening here because yeah. there's no lights on in the tent right no uh, with the but for, like, then the again camera, yeah. they could have been stalked and yeah. they were witnessed the whole time so I I guess my point's not to be doing uh, no mind Classic, classic, classic. I mean, they, the, 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 the <laughs> sort of thing here is that they agreed not to start a fire at night. Yeah, they oh, were yeah. like, we see, they are learning here. They're like, we start a fire, you know. And there was noise. Yeah. So let's not have a fire this night. Let's not have a fire this night and get chased out in the woods. Yeah, because I think the fire is <laughs> caused to not, you know, the disturbance of the grave or graves. Um, yeah, could be. Sorry, I think something. Point. Of course, because they believe this was real and actually going on at the time when they were filming it, that they didn't take the camera or not, not one of them was brave enough for when they came out of the tent to just turn the camera around to look at what was hitting the tent. Yeah. They just booked it. Yep. Uh, so that's more believable because yeah. they, they a, were actually scared. That's, that's an appropriate reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Though if it was a bear, they would be dead. So... <laughs> oh well, yeah, that would rip the tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this thing wasn't piercing the tent in any way. It was just whacking it, kind of <laughs> whacking it with a bat. Um, well, so yeah, and then with that, uh, oh, crimson. Oh, um, when when they darted out, it was Josh and Heather together, and Mike split off, right? Yeah, Initially. I think. I believe Mike was the first one because Mike was in front of Heather. I believe it's kind of hard to tell because it's. 
can't really make it's out what's going on. Blank. Yeah. Um, but well, I think Mike was in on, front. So said, who, who was oh. Because well, Heather was running. I believe I thought Heather was running at Mike and then couldn't see him anymore. Yeah. Started calling like, out yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And then it cuts to all three of them together with the flashlights to turn them off. Yeah. Um. So then day six, uh, the camp is ransacked. Got the whole thing to do with America, where they're going crazy, just loving America. Um, they find the same log. Uh, Josh starts being a bit of a bully, I wrote down, to uh, yeah, Heather. Well, I mean, he's been out there for like six days. and He's going to write been... us a happy ending, Heather. Yeah. Yeah. And she, and she killed them. Night six, yeah. we have hemming pants and mashed potatoes. You missed the thing. The slime. Oh, I thought it, yeah, uh, Camp well, yeah. God Ransack, which is yeah, the yeah. slime, all of Josh's yeah. stuff. All over Josh's stuff. Yeah, which was apparently a KC jelly they used. <laughs> KC jelly, classic. I think that's what it was. Yeah. I didn't have that written down, but I it was in one of the facts I was looking at. And this then, this yeah, was also Josh... the day where Mike and Josh kind of have the one diddy flip, where Mike is the level-headed one, yeah. and Josh isn't. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a certain point where I could believe like Mike just giving up on life and he doesn't care anymore, but that's not the vibes I got with him here. At, at this I, point, the, later down the line, where Josh is out of the picture, I, I sense it. There's, well, there's also like the you know the what the six, twelve steps or whatever to acceptance or something. There's no. So he kind of. He, he started. Er, yeah. Like, well, he started early enough. Like he was freaking out early enough where I could kind of like yeah, just like. Yeah, I think Mike earlier on with thinking they're lost to begin with, yeah. where Josh and uh, Heather still believe like they can get out of here. Uh, Mike was losing it, and at that point, just getting mad and thinking he was lost. So up to this point, he's been lost in his mind longer than Heather and Josh are, and now. I They're believe kind of this is level, yeah. Josh. Josh is now at the point that Mike was out of thinking. Yeah, I'm actually we're actually lost now. Yeah. Um, also, so. the fact that all three of them have gotten greater encounters from said Blair Witch. Yeah. But yeah, Josh is a is a big bully. He films Heather and yells at her. Oh yeah. I find it just your motivation. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, not yeah. not saying it's not warranted, but yeah, it's yeah. kind of hard to watch. There was a point where I was, uh, yeah, there was a point where I'm like, I'm still, like, on Josh's side for this one. This is kind of your mm -hmm. fault. Obviously, I think oh, Josh overdoes it, but, and it, do, it does get hard to watch, at least for me, towards the end. But I thought... Yeah, because they're focusing, at least Heather's focusing still on making a documentary of what they're seeing as Josh and Mike are just, let's get out of here. And Heather's like, I want to get out of here too, but keeps filming. Yeah. Which oh, was yeah, Mike, which was a little bit like, grating at fights her, fashion. Fights her earlier, yeah, trying to cam, take it yeah. away from take the me. camera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Five hundred dollar camera, there, Bucky. Uh, there is there is there is a little line of dialogue here. This little nugget that I uh, that I appreciated, yeah. I suppose, which was uh, Josh saying like, I, "I I can see why you like this. You know, you get to pretend yeah. that nothing else, everything's is, okay, everything's yeah. okay, and nothing's real." You know, like you're yeah. you're you're watching through a lens, and that's like the same thing of like I guess people who watch war films like they get to experience the adrenaline of what's mm -hmm. going on, but it's not actually real. Yeah, um, I don't know, writer, if that was around the same time, but I also wrote down a a line I kind of like that was said. Um, unfortunately, I didn't write down who said it. I think it was Mike, uh, but they said reality says we got to move. I think that was connected was, to the camera. Think it was Mike. Yeah. Used, yeah. I think it was Mike. Ooh, that sounds thunder. like a Mike thing. Yeah, I, I think thunder. it was like, you know, the this is your own different reality in the camera. And Mike pops up, you know, reality says we got to move. Got to get out of here. Um, but yeah, then they just start talking about food at night. <laughs> I, I got a cheeseburger in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I think was very good because like you know they as much as they it argue is. as much as they argue during yeah, the day I, I like that at when night rolls around they ever they they're more calm and they're collected and they can talk each other down. Well, they yeah. still know this is all we have right now. We have each other. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's an interesting dynamic, or, and I guess uh, 
kind of, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing of, because you, you're kind of expecting, like, because most horror films, like, they, they, it's, like, all, like, a roller coaster. It's just, like, that first, it's rising, 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 and just waiting for, like, the, you know, the, you know, to strike you. And this one kind of has, it's got, like, waves of kind of, you know, fucked up shit happening, and then, like, you know, moments of calm or some sort of, you know, uh, like a comic relief or in some form or another, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting. Yeah, but uh, I think it. I was just gonna. It adds a sorry. It adds a, a at least the conversations like this at night. It adds a layer of realism, I think, to it as well. Yeah, because you know. There are times where you fight your friends, and there are times where you. I don't are. know what that's like at all. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah, shut the fuck up. Wait till you're done. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> what you just said to me, motherfucker. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's always time where you, you know, are argue with your friends and stuff like that, and people that you know, and then you know you tend to wind down by the end of the day, offer apologies, and work things out. You know, if you most of the time, yeah. so. Hey, hey, dude. Sorry, I called you motherfucker. I didn't mean it. Yeah, sorry, I told you to shut the fuck up. That was on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was here to witness it. And tomorrow morning, one of them will be gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder uh, who. <laughs> yeah, uh, Crimson, do you have anything to say over day six? Oh, yeah, but I also have a, another general question here. Hey, um, what day do you think they ran out of food? Because they didn't really show them eating. Much in yeah, this they film. didn't have much. They referenced yeah. food. I like, assume they ran. They, they never about rationing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. assume so they, they ran out of food around talk. day three. Because they only because they were they only going to be, be out a there. one to two day thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they were only going to be out out there for like at least two days because they had to bring the uh, dat uh, recorder back yeah. on the I believe the third or fourth day. Yeah. Um. um so yeah. they wouldn't have been par they. They probably would have brought more than two days worth, just, you know. I think, yeah, I assume day three is when they ran out. Okay. Yeah. My guess was day four. Okay. So, no. uh, simple for the fact, like, I think it was day eight. Uh, Mike brings up, like, oh, I have another pack of cigarettes that I found. At the bottom of my... Yeah. No, he's like, I found some cigarettes at the bottom of my pack. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I wrote down that Heather finally broke here. Yeah, and, uh, pretty much. I, I, I liked that she did. Oh, yeah, Josh pushed her. Yeah. Well, this was even before that when they yeah, came but, across like, the log again. Uh, yeah, she, like, she starts crying. It's not the same log. It's not the same log. The same log. And uh, I liked that. You know, it's pretty good. You know, just be, you know, it, here's, here's an interesting little factoid for you. Because uh, mm -hmm. I. Because I was watching it, I was really surprised by how well. I mean, how well you know for like a low budget indie film, how well like the acting was, especially for the nature of you know, especially finding out it's improv, so it's that's even harder. Yeah. Especially if you're not a good actor. Uh, the the actress or the actor who played Heather, who is also named Heather but not anymore. Uh, was uh, I think she was like nominated for like a Golden Raspberry Award or something, which Golden is oh, nice. those nice. are like the uh, the th no those are like for bad performances, <laughs> bad oh, movies. Nice. Yeah, and I was like, I don't think that like oh, I think she does a great job. Yeah, I was like, I, I yeah, yeah, I was I was surprised by that, and apparently that she uh, she, that's why she I think that's one of the reasons why she like went on and changed her name because I think she had a she got a lot of backlash. Yeah, she got. For this. Typecasted and um, stopped uh, acting. Now she uh, sells CBD. Her family was getting letters of, well, especially during the time it came out. I think all the families were getting letters of like, "Sorry that your child passed," and because people actually thought yeah. their kids were dead. Yeah, <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. yeah, because of the marketing <laughs> and yeah. it all. Um, anywho, I think I find it interesting that night six, nothing really happened. Yeah, it was just yeah. casual, pretty much. I mean, well, except for one thing. In, <laughs> well, one thing the next morning, but nothing yeah. was recorded. No noise. No one was woken up to record. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, well, I, I they point, were probably so the, sleep deprived from not sleeping the previous night that they just blacked out and didn't. Uh, there, there could have been 
stuff. But they slept I'm, in I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming Josh was taken during his watch. Was he taken? Or was he or was he pushed? Uh, Did he hear something go outside and get snatched? I from within? same I'm, same I'm thing. I'm trying to think <laughs> on their watch they were awake and probably in the tent so they were together. So what would be a way for one of them to get out of the tent? And yeah, especially think... not take a camera with them. Bathroom break. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be on, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm whatever. Josh had to use the restroom. Yeah, I'm assuming he had to use the restroom. I also just this is a tip for if you ever go camping in the forest, you do not keep watch in the tent. Well, no, you don't see anything. Yeah. So I I, I, stuff, I, but... I I assume that. I actually assumed that they would keep watch outside the tent, but because that was just a, that's just a natural thing that you're supposed to do. But n- maybe that you're right. He just had to go to the restroom or something during his watch and, and never. Well, I'm trying. Back. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the reason why he wouldn't have a camera. Well, he was because against he them still recording. So. Oh, okay. Oh, well, okay. I guess at that point, because of everything he said to Heather earlier, that would make sense. Heather would probably be the only one with a camera then. Yeah. For that time being, yeah, yeah, it's there's problem. Yeah, I don't really know what could have gotten him out of the tent other than just the fact that I could, you know, I could almost just see him just being like, you know, fuck this, I'm just gonna, you know, start going on my own and you know, just gonna keep walking until I get out or something, you know. No, I don't but, think he's reached that yeah. point yeah. yet. The other thing though, that he, the thing that immediately stopped that for me was when they said he left all of his stuff, and I'm like, yeah, no, that's that's not possible. <laughs> yeah. Even so, the fact even that he he knew he was the targeted one because the goo was all over his stuff. Yeah. So oh, do you think this was a sacrifice he left to save his friends? No, absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> no, it's. See, it's, that's the thing. It's like, it's, there's enough information and there's not enough information here where you could, it's, it's almost limitless what could have, you know, occurred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was no... It can be a knock on a film. But I, think, I think, I think it film. adds to this specifically and I think it does, it takes away from this film at some points and at some points it helps build the film. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was nothing shut. There was no noise. There was, the, the, the tent door wasn't still open. Um, his stuff was still there. So, my best guess is a bathroom break. And I will use that to take my bathroom break right now. All right. Are we fine to continue with that? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. You get, yeah I'll, okay. I'll, I'll jump in if with anything. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll go on to uh, day seven, um, which the day was very short. The night was a bit longer. Uh, but day seven with the famous quote of this movie, which we didn't start with because it's so short, but just the name Josh, because Josh is missing. Josh is gone. And then no, night seven, Josh. we got some trauma bonding of Mike and Heather, and Heather uh, actually losing it um, that night. Or sorry, uh, the uh, the sounds of Josh, yeah, that night. Um, so my question is that first night, or not first time, but like night seven, the fir- uh, the night Josh is gone. And we hear Josh screaming out in the woods. Do you think that's actually Josh that night? Um, no, <laughs> because the reason I the reason I say no is because there's a line later on that it makes different noises. So they're hearing different voices uh, at different points. So I assumed it was actually mim- I, I was it was them the thing mimicking Josh's voice. Okay. Maybe it's not a Bigfoot, it's a Wendigo. Maybe awesome. it's actually a Hollywood movie. Whoa. 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 Wendigos mimic voices. That's well, yeah. see, Hollywood doesn't uh-huh. make movies as good as this anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> something, something I liked that was a good indication or still making Mike not brain dead was when he asked Josh, where are you? And he was just still screaming. He goes, Josh would have told us where he was. Yes. Yeah, it's a good he point. He would have yeah. actually responded. That's why. I, that's why. I also, I mean, the the camp of I don't think that was Josh actually screaming. Okay. Do you think at that point Josh was dead? Yeah. Or um, at least, if not dead, probably. Like, if not dead, exposed. only mostly yeah. dead. Yeah. If uh, the indication dead. of the uh, 
Coffin Rock Massacre is uh, anything, uh, probably not doing really well at the very least. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. It, it's weird because so we don't know how he's taken. He probably would have screamed and yelled outside the tent getting taken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so oh, I'd have if, so much fun with magic, but I, I he was got nothing for that. Getting disemboweled and stuff. Um, I feel like they would have heard that during the day. So uh, I think it would either have been would one have kept of, him alive the whole day either. Okay, I think one of two things: either a swift knockout, so no noise, uh, to take his body somewhere, or it was a swift kill, just like an instant death, no noise. Oh, well, I probably would have come across the board. Well, uh, I don't know. Okay, so... At least from what we know with the Coffin Rock thing, it's whatever is out there, you know... This is once again 100% me writing for them, so... Just uh, go for it, yeah. Well, it has to be 100%. They didn't write anything. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Um, So, how most magic systems work, there's a cause and effect. I think Josh would need to have been alive long enough for the witch to do something in order to project his scream. Mm-hmm. So it could I not mean, be a swift. It, for days. It, it could not be in his voice. That. Uh, that's it, true, but not really. Josh screaming in pain. I don't. I'm gonna make a connection to another movie, which this reminds me of. Oh, which okay. this this movie, yeah, Annihilation. Do you uh, think there's a bear out there? No, no. I just don't. I don't think it's like Annihilation, where it evolved from it. But I think it could be. The witch could be just using his vocal cords. Um, or, uh, what was that, Independence Day? Where the aliens rap around the, the throats of the scientists to communicate? <laughs> where the aliens rap. <laughs> yeah, they're like... Or rub their fingers around the what throats and using the vocal cords. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a plenty of ways we could say the, the witch used... Use Josh's voice. voice. Yeah. yeah, but once again, it's us writing for them. So yeah, yeah but the, the original question was if it was like if he yeah. was alive at that point. Yeah, I don't great. think so. Uh, or if he, like I said, he w- he was either barely alive or he was you know yeah. dead by that point. The only reason I'm saying barely alive is just because it seems like whatever the thing is that's out there. There's uh, a level of toying for, with them now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because now it's it's got them, so now it's just a matter of how they go versus when they go. Yeah. Yeah. And as well. anything else to cover with day seven and night seven? Uh, no, I sure I love the trauma bonding talk between the trauma uh, bonding was between good, Heather yeah. and uh, Mike. Mike, quite nice. Yeah, I think no, I think his his one eighty was worth it for that uh bounce of character development there. Uh, they're they were look going to look for Josh. Like, how are we going to find Josh? We can't find the car. I'm like, great point, <laughs> Lee Josh. That's a great. That's a great point. You're right. We can't even find True South. Yeah. Yeah, and the talked about the the Wicked Witch. Was it yeah, which, which was worse? Was the Wicked Witch of the yeah, because they were like, do we go east or west? And he was like, was it the Wicked Witch of the West or the East? And she says, it was the Yeah, what was the evil one? Which one was the evil one? The Wicked Witch of the West. He's like, all right, East it is then. Yep. It's a good dialogue. Uh, yeah, yeah that was good. I concur. Uh, and so this is that, also where we learn the whole thing about Sunday if she goes hiking. Yeah. Yeah, she was like, well, it used to be, I would go hiking. Yeah. Which does damage Heather a little bit, too. <laughs> Well, either damages her, or it makes the situation all the more dire. I guess that you know, an, a, at least a somewhat experienced hiker can get fucked up into this. You know, which what what chance? Well, no, see, else the, no, the, the the damaging part is she got lost. This is also us believing that Heather, when went on hikes, was alone and went yeah. by herself. She wasn't yeah. in teams and relied on other people to lead her. Yeah, that's that's another thing we don't. Yep, we don't know I mean, enough. I don't think she goes through with a team. She still catch things. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, like yeah. I said, it's damaging. It's not like it doesn't break her character, but it's still damaging. That's that's what I, that's the kind of where I'm at with her line here. Yeah. It's very it's a nice character building thing intentionally, but I do think it does damage the earlier <laughs> aspect of the story when they were trying to 
when they were going off trail, quote unquote. If you could more... also mean that, like, yeah, going, but we also, at least from, again, this might be an earlier nitpick of mine, is that, like, they don't really show any trails for, like, the forest area. They're, they're either, or if they do, they're, like, way off the trail. They do, they do start on trails. They at least, start on they're trails, very, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, they look very, very uh, minimal. Leaf covered. Leaf covered. They're very minimalized trails, because that's, yeah. what, that's what, you know, trails are when they're not used yeah. frequently. But they do look like trails at the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, they get off of the shortcuts. Say she goes, yeah. Does she act, Yeah, that's true. Does she actually say she goes like hiking and camping, or does she just say camping? So I thought it was just she. She says hiking on some days. Okay. Hiking through the forest on some days, right? That was. Yeah. So it could just be a, a one day thing, not camping and camping per se. Yeah. But it, even with hiking, that, you need yeah. to know directions. Yes. Yeah. Sure. But again, there's enough supernatural. I feel like there's enough hints for supernatural shit that it seems like even an experienced person could. Very there's enough. There's it. enough hints for the supernatural, but none of it's solidified. Yeah, I think it would have been worse, at least for Heather's sake, of the whole hiking thing if more was said or shown earlier about mm -hmm. it. The fact that it's really, one line. Yeah. Yes, it is harmful, as Ryder said, yeah, but it's not as dire as it could be. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't it break her character. It doesn't break the story that's yeah. being told, but it does because, damage her character in a yeah. way that it's Plus, it's a flaw. But it's not like it doesn't break everything completely. It's not. Yeah, it's not contradicting anything beforehand. Yeah. Plus, the, I feel like there's at least a couple of things early earlier on in the film that kind of points to. She might she might have done hiking, but she's very inexperienced because she has issues with the, the packs and she's not really you know. She, she's not done, granted that could that's more that camping be related. Film. Yeah, the, all yeah. the equipment yeah. that she's having to bring out. Yeah, uh, one of my one of my notes I wrote down just for those little the packs that they were carrying. I'm like, huh, reminds you of the Hobbit packs from uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings. Just I was just amused. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think there's there's an there's a good amount that it's. I think a bad character, you know, a, a missed character trait or something. But there's also enough that's like it's it's a, it's a little bit of a misfire, but you know, it's not like I said, it doesn't break her character. Yeah. All right, and uh, I guess we'll go on to the last day then, day eight and night eight. And what do uh, they find outside the tent? Yeah, it starts with the gift and Heather hyperventilating. And the night of Heather's famous video, which is, I think, pretty much the poster yeah, cover the poster, yeah. of this whole movie. Mm -hmm. um, following the voice of Josh, uh, getting the courage to go just follow the voice because they both think they're just going to die anyway. Uh, and the whole house to and, the end of the movie. And this is why, in my head, I have to justify that the compass points always is pointing at the house. Because there's no way they could just find this randomly. That quickly, otherwise. No. Well, if it always pointed to the house, why would they end up looping instead of just getting to the destination? Originally? That's true. Uh, well, because they're so not I trying to... Like the, the okay, so the, if the compass is always pointing at the house, that means it's always pointing north. So it would lead them in a loop when they're not going that direction, which they never they did do. they went south with the compass, which looped back to the creek. Yeah. But again, so, it's, it, this is a weird, like, supernatural thing. Like I said, that's why I said, this is why, I'm, this is why I'm just in the middle of nowhere. This yeah. is why I'm justifying that the compass is always pointing at the this, house, the quote-unquote north of the small little world that the witch has trapped yeah. them in. I think you're just, yeah, you're just saying a, pointing weird because it's technically it's not pointing at the house; it's pointing. They're yeah. following the opposite way to connect what to what Ryder's saying in a mm -hmm. probably a really dumb analogy. But Go imagine on. if they're on a treadmill. And let's say there's like a green line on the treadmill and the house is behind them because they're walking south and the house is behind them north. While walking on the treadmill, they'll come across that green line on the treadmill again, which is indicating the creek. So when they choose to go north, as we were saying, to the house, they simply turn around on the treadmill and go straight there. You're right. That was a dumb analogy. Um, yeah. 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 I was just and, my, my, and, where... and my connection for going east and west in this yeah, scenario yeah. is the more like you have a you have a wheel on a pin that you can spin yeah. so you're you're, you're yeah. constantly going to be orbiting almost you know you're working yeah. in an orbit pattern 
yeah, what you're, yeah, I, yeah, I know what you were saying, but I was just like, I think that's really confusing to say it in that way, or it sounds confusing I'm when you say it like confused. that, but I know what you, yeah. you're still confused? Because, well, yeah, if you think it points to the cabin, why does it point the opposite direction of the cabin? I, I, I don't get it. Uh, well, you saying do you not know how, okay, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 do you actually know how compasses work? Yes. They're always pointing north. Yeah. Okay, so it would only so point towards the house the being opposite. north. They're, okay. Okay, so this is this is what uh, this is. I, I guess. <laughs> Crimson, how do you think this discussion of the compasses is working in your mind? Well, I'm trying to think. From the beginning, they had the compass and the mm -hmm. map. So, when right they entered the forest, no. do you think it was already pointing? At the cabin? No. See, that's the weird thing. They don't. I, they, they I don't, don't really, really know. About the map. I don't really yeah. know when they transition into the which being or affecting it or whatever. I assume it's around the time they get lost is when the compass starts working. And when they when they loop back to the creek, that's the only hint that you have really that the compass is not doing what it's supposed to. Because mm -hmm. it's on the compass and not them. Yeah, because the compass, tenic, you know, the compass would technically always point you in the right direction, unless you're being fucked with. Yeah, unless a magnetic change. Or in this case, a magical change. Yeah. Magical. Uh, witchcraft. I'm, I'm guessing fine with it if it switches at some point, but we never saw that. Well, that's, again, that's part of the... Uh... Well, Mike had the compass the whole time. Before the map, right? No, no, no. No, Heather, Heather was the one with the compass. Shoot. Yeah, Mike yeah, wanted to hold the compass, but she wouldn't let him. Yeah. Okay. She, she bought it. She bought. She said, "I bought the compass." Okay, I thought someone said, "Give me the compass." That Josh was wanted that was the Josh. compass because Heather was incompetent. <laughs> okay. And Mike already <laughs> fucked up. That's why. That's why Josh won. Yeah. yeah. Right after Mike said he threw away the map or whatever, he wanted the comp. He wanted to see the comp. He's like, "Can I see the compass now?" And she said, "No, no." Okay. You would be on to fuck yourself not being able to see the compass. Well, I mean, this just goes more towards like hiking and general survival because you can see the sun setting, you can see the moss on trees. There's a lot of aspects of knowing where your direction is and seeing if the compass works or not. Yeah, they never talked about the sun. But, yeah, so, about the moss either. but they could have done a really stupid throwaway line of. You know, um, can't see it through the trees or something like that. Uh, I'm telling you right now, we are putting more thought into this than they did. Oh, uh, certainly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because they don't need it. But yeah. it yeah. also could be in the like 45 plus minutes that was cut out of the film. They, were, they filmed about 20 hours of footage. Yeah. Yeah. The initial run was an hour and 50 minutes that they cut There's down. There's a bunch of deleted scenes, so there, you know, there could be stuff yeah. in there that they were like, yeah, that that would explain more, but it also would make it a little less. Actual. I don't know. If they want to build this whole tension, you know, to get to where the conclusion is, they wouldn't necessarily want, like, halfway through a slower part of the movie to calm the audience, I guess. But, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, day eight starts with the gift outside the tent. What's it, a gift? Uh, I wrote down a gift. It was, it was left for them. I thought they were at. It was a what, what would you call a a bundle of sticks, Crimson? A cigarette in Britain. <laughs> Britain yeah. We can't say that word. We, can't, we didn't say it though. We called it a That's cigarette. That's true. <laughs> uh, I, I wrote down when I saw that that uh, Josh's outfit question mark with the fabric. Yeah. And we find out later it was. So I was. I was surprised that I, I figured it out before Heather, the person who I was actually holding it. Either she, it. Well, yeah, she could have also... I think she probably had a nice... Yeah. I think she was a little in shock. Yeah, I think... She, I think she, <laughs> from what happened after... hyperventilating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, not when she first saw the... No. Was, well, no. She was just like... Oh, that, that was when she went back and opened it later. Yeah, yeah I absolutely like, think I'm it's... I find it weird she didn't open it with Mike. Well, because he was already, he'd already well, been. Well, Mike on. was filming her, because. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought she was holding the camera herself all. Yeah, she it. she was 
Hold on, yeah, so. No, but she, yeah, but, Mike's, but, Mike, yeah. but, but Mike is also because next he, to her recording she, as well. She, she, she never told Mike what she found in that. Yeah, she, I think she told him about, like, she there, there, knew But there is, there, a, was, like, there is a shot of her reacting where Mike is clearly the one holding the camera because she can't get that shot because she has both hands on her person. But, but there was a scene when they first oh. see the gift or whatever where... He's like, put it in the back. He's like, I don't want to see it or something. And so she put it like away from the front of the tent. Yeah, that's true. And then I assume, I assume, I assume, I assume they both came back to open it because I don't know. Okay, I just find it weird. I don't think he ever did. Yeah, yeah. She's freaking out, and then she comes across him, and he's like, "What's up?" And she's like, "Oh, nothing." Yeah. Yeah. So that wouldn't make sense if he had seen that. Mm Hmm. I guess it would make sense. Back and see it. Okay. Yeah, we got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not supposed to remember correctly. Gotta go watch the movie either again. Either if writers correct, then the script or their imp- improv was wrong later when he's asked asked her what's wrong. Uh, but if it's filmed that Mike is filming her, then that just it doesn't make sense. The only thing I can think of is that she didn't want to add another. Yeah. Dick to Mike. If, so if we're going off. off that Mike didn't know, I agree. That, that was totally her headspace. On the Wikipedia, it says she does not tell Mike, although distraught. So, right. unless unless there was some fuck up of, you know, uh, error, you know, uh, movie error. Or, or unless writer saw a different version of the film that we didn't see. <laughs> we all saw it on Hulu, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I did watch it on Hulu, so... Okay, I was just curious because with yeah. the possibility that all these various deleted scenes out there. Uh, guys, I got to be honest. I I didn't actually watch uh, which I watched Night of Living Dead. Uh, <laughs> oh, that oh. explains it. That, that explains why he was talking about racist zombies. Um. So yeah, it had. All I can really remember, it had a tooth. Yeah, I thought it, it was a tooth and some hair. Yeah. Hair. And a bunch and it of had blood. Something, yeah, that something looked like a just like a huge tooth. But yeah, I couldn't tell what it was because it was covered was, in blood. Yeah, supposedly it's uh, a it's a it's a, it's like teeth, hair, a finger, and a large piece of tongue. Supposedly, I but, oh, okay, that, that could be tongue. <laughs> yeah, I just saw blood, hair, and tooth. Yeah. Okay. There's that um, big, like, red shape in the center. Yeah, no, it just I like think tooth and blood, I, but I as didn't. As far as I know, the filmmakers have never stated exactly what it is, so it's another one of those things that everybody has a, a theory about what it is. But okay, Different roughly that's that's the at least on the Wikipedia, I think that's like a kind of a summation of all the things that it could possibly have been, whether it is or isn't. Gotcha. So yeah, Mike or no, sorry, Josh got like fucked up. <laughs> oh yeah. He could still be alive. Yeah, he's just just a little he wouldn't want to be anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, I like that uh, Mike eats a leaf today. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was a weird... Yeah. If you watch it, that's like right before shit goes really It's a, it's a very oddly placed scene now. <laughs> yeah, it's a very... Yeah, it has a really odd energy in comparison to the last like 15 minutes of this movie. This is the point where I brought up earlier where Mike is at the I don't care stage. Yeah, it's just like, I, this is, he's hungry, he's gonna eat a leaf, fuck it. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. die anyway. He pretty much accepted he's dead, yeah. And then we go to Heather, um, Paul's into the camera, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the iconic uh, scene. Yeah. Very, very, a, very strong monologue. Bit of a fun fact here. Um, Come, on. Come on, give it to us. Then. Yeah, hey, Heather yeah, yeah. did not intentionally get, uh, the zoom to be that close to her face. She actually oh, thought it would be like her whole face. Yeah, it's better. But it, I, th- I think it does better because she oh. Heather can act a lot. They put it on the poster. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a lot better because she can act the hell out of her eyes. Yeah, you can see the fear. Yeah. Well, she's also physically actually in the yeah, moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tired, hungry. Yep. I'm sorry for Josh's mom, Mike's Probably mom, some emotional everybody. Pain. So, Springs, what you're saying is is that if we want a really good performance out of any actor, we have to put them in the actual situation that's happening in the movie. Yeah. 
True method right. acting from the director. All right. We're going to do the new Schindler's List, everybody. The new Schindler's List. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> um, well, it's the fact at, at the beginning they did sign on for the project. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I, I don't think, think it, what was going to happen. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think any of these people, well, I'm not going to say that, but I don't, I think most of the, you know, actors are fairly, if they know something's good, they're going to stick with it no matter what, so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Heather's emotional video, and then Ooh. Mike and her just agreeing, tonight's the night, but we're just going to go. Yeah, they they run out and are filming together pretty much. Yeah, they just like yeah. Follow the voice of Josh uh, to Our the house. Voice of Josh to a house, which well, may or may not be Rustin Parr house. I, I guess before we leave the whole Heather recording. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked how she <laughs> owned up to her mistakes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I had to be a she control. It, it was my idea. It's my. F- our fault we got lost, and my fault we kept going. Not, my whole idea was going south, and everything had to be my way, and I'm cold and hungry. Oh. Hmm. That's true. That is hmm. all true facts. Good job. Yes, Heather, you are a true Good job. I, I appreciate it. Way to self-evaluate. Yeah. No one does anymore. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the house was pretty creepy looking. Yeah, it looked like a hobo hangout or something yeah. especially mm-hmm. for night because it was that i guess that just film dark bluish yeah. tint uh with the flashlights where's the tap yeah, team <laughs> where's the tap team <laughs> Those tunnels. and for me at least i couldn't tell who was holding what camera until it showed mike in the house yeah because yeah. the audio was just kind of bouncing around i couldn't tell who was who yeah, the Heather's audio seemed very off to me, because even when she was holding her camera, she still sounded far away. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's, oh. I don't, I don't know if they. It's a weird thing where I don't, because of how it's it's edited to look, you know. So it's the audio is going to be off from the camera because a lot of stuff happens like a few seconds. You don't get the audio for it until like a few seconds after it's already occurred. Yeah, or, and they're not going to use both cameras' audios. So they could have been using Mike's audio from his camera during that time. So she did sound farther away. Yeah, yeah I don't because yeah, she was uh, actively trying to catch up to him most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> he did not care about her one bit. No, no he no, did not. Josh. The audio to me that was to be fair, I would care more about Josh off. too. <laughs> yeah. The audio to me that was a bit off was the voice of Josh did not sound like it was in the building. No, it didn't. It sounded like I, I. I wouldn't hear that and be like, oh, he's in this building. Well, no, also, it sounded like it was still outside. Writer, since you were also a subtitler, there was apparently two voices. Yes, there was There was, there was two there was voices. Was Josh, the and then one just titled Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I guess there what were, were two voices going on uh, in that in place. And then they went upstairs First. And that's where the handprints were. The bloody handprints. Yeah, the kid handprint. They look pretty small, so I'm guessing hand, like kid-sized handprints. Mm-hmm. Well, so this is probably Mr. Pyre's house, right? Uh, yeah, Rustin and Parr. Yeah, the, the, supposedly. Yeah. I would assume so. If yeah. the if the if we're hearing, especially if we're hearing a man's voice too, I and, probably. Yeah. Again, this is also feeding into the. Uh, um, the lore, or the lore of the movie that we don't get to see technically in the, um, the lore that they set up beforehand that was part of the promotion for the movie and not in the movie itself was supposedly the guy who was the hermit who murdered like the seven kids. After he was arrested and everything, they burned down his house. So there's no way there would be a house. Oh, so this house shouldn't be standing. Yeah. If this is the house. Gotcha. If this is that. I believe it's supposed to be, but again, that's, you know, up to interpretation. Okay. Well, we also get the... No, we're at the end, but... Uh, we, Come on. We're, we're, we're Go for it. Mike's in the corner, and then... Uh, yeah. Something happens to Heather, <laughs> so which is one of the rumors with Mr. Pyre, where he took two kids, 
put one face in the corner, killed one, and then killed the one in the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, is there a witch, or is it just the ghost of Mr. Pyre? I don't know. But then, the noise is actually coming from downstairs, at least to Mike, which I think works for me. Yeah, knowing that... like, yeah they, were, they were in like the living room or whatever, and he's like, it's upstairs! Wait, no, it's downstairs! Yeah, well, they went upstairs. Yeah. Which I think was just him exploring. I don't think he actually heard it from upstairs. But then he when we're upstairs, he yeah, yeah, he, he heard he, stuff he upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. Um, but I think it was outside, and then it came in and went to the basement, which is when he said, <gasps> "I hear it downstairs," because I think at that time it actually went down. Mm-hmm. So as he's running down, he goes down. You know, gets dunked on yeah, the head. Heather's like, Heather's like looking through like the windows, and she hears a bunch of shit or something. Yeah. So. I guess the two subtitle subtitlers here probably have a better answer than I do or thought on this. But when Josh is going down the stairs and Josh's voice turns into screaming, is that Heather screaming for Mike or is that the voice okay. of the witch changing to a scream? I think it's Heather. It was Heather. It was Heather yeah, okay. for, for Mike. Yeah, yeah Heather, okay. was, Heather was shouting after him. Cause Cause it just she, was, she was running blend. ahead and leaving her behind. Okay, when Mike got to the basement, to me, it just started to blend, and I couldn't tell if that was yeah, that's, a voice changing yeah. to a scream, or if that was Heather in the background. No, that, sure yeah, it was all Heather yelling, because Mike was okay. leaving her, and not talking back. Yeah. Gotcha. For the first time ever. And then, Heather gets downstairs, see, doesn't, I don't, I don't even know if she sees, but her camera falls, and uh, Mike is standing in the corner now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. More than likely dead, but I assume well, I assume the she's story. Dead. He's alive. Yeah, he's but, alive, and he, uh, but she's dead. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I guess he's hexed because I don't know why he purposely just stand there. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we don't know. Give any, get anything to know. No. Uh, and then we get the end of the movie. Yeah, Crimson the falling on Credits the ground and roll. <laughs> rolling. No. and this is where Crimson went. Well, that was a waste of time. Well. That's, that's... Well, I, I, I did go to my parents say, well, I finished the movie. And they're like, oh, how was it? I'm like, well, that was anticlimactic. Uh, Which was the point? Yeah. Well, that just sucks then, if that's yeah. the point. If it's the point, does not negate that it's still a problem. <laughs> it's... So. Is it the... Yeah, okay. Well, that's we an interesting know. point. Can we... Can we talk about the ending of this just before we go into sure. final thoughts? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. This sure. As before we started recording, that was or that was a big thing, and I had to. We all had to kind of hold our tongues because it was, was going to be a yeah. Yeah. Is if the whole point, or I guess if if the if they were going for it, they're going to have it be an ending that has essentially, you know, a, a, not necessarily not a payoff, but a you know a payoff that doesn't create you know like a oh they got away safely or you know whatever that you know that kind of a final thing you know because some things have cliffhangers or what have you uh mm-hmm. if the whole per- if they went in and the purpose of the ending was for you know necessarily that lack of a you know big you know payoff isn't that like technically wouldn't that be the point and not just, you know, like a... a uh, okay, so... Yeah. Well, here's like, my, here's like, my, like, my, the definition, if that was what they were going for, isn't that technically a success in and of itself? You, or, you don't get credit for accomplishing what you're going for. You get, a, you, you get credit for ex- how you execute your goal. Because I would argue that The Last Jedi is 100% Ryan Johnson's vision for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. But uh, it is not a good movie. <laughs> So, well, in regards to it being classified as a uh, ending, um, it doesn't really conclude anything other than our characters' lives, which can be a satisfying ending. But we don't get anything leading up to that point, really, that came to an end. Yeah, I, the last day is very disjointed, as as we, as you said, sinister. When uh, when we go from him eating a leaf. To them, going out yeah. at night, it was—it's a pretty big jump. But I, but I think though, in the nature of uh, 
you know, what this is going for. I, granted, I know, you know, you said, you know, it's vision doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but, um, like, if you're freaking, you know, as they are supposed to be, you're hungry, you're cold, you, you've pretty much given up on the chance of survival, uh, you know, you're, and you're making it like, you're probably not going to be recording as much as you were, you know, or, you know, when you were starting. So I can at least understand why there would be like a, a jump here of like, okay, this is where like stuff isn't happening, whatever this is like a last, you know, it, it, it fits, I think, thematically for the nature of the film that it would be a little bit more disjointed like the last day because it's kind of like when spirits are pretty much at their lowest and you don't really want to be recording all the time or whatever. Sorry, that wasn't that wasn't my that, that, was, that was the point I was trying to make. But I I I, I, I understand I, I, I understand your explanation. I agree with that. Yeah. I, but I think as far I mean, the ending, it works, because of how, it's not you know it's not a good ending. I mean it's not a good ending in the way of like it's a positive end. It's, kind of it's like almost this, we're gonna classify i'm going to say something that we've said a little bit earlier it's almost like a loop like this this kind of you can kind of get a sense that this has happened before this is happening now it's going to happen again of these people that keep kind of showing up and then you know you want it's like class you know it's like a horror film or something you know or a general horror film where a bunch of teenagers get together you know fuck around da 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 and then, you know, a slasher comes in and, you know, murders all of them, and then they make 20 movies out of that or something. It's, you know, that's the sort of the gist I got from it as, as far as, like, it's it's not going to pay you off in the form of you get to see something or you get to, you know, it's it's paying off in the way of I'd this, is, like to well, this connect, is what happens. Yeah. I'd like to con- connect off of Sinister with two brief questions. Mm-hmm. One, to Ryder and Crimson, do you think this – movie's ending would have been better if you saw at the end the Blair Witch or their interpretation no. of what it was. No, I don't think we needed to see. No, I don't okay, I don't think so. we needed to see the monster. I can see how okay. that would add a facet to the ending where there is a if they played into the mystery aspect of it a little more and mm-hmm. that could have been a payoff to subvert the anticlimactic feeling that this creates. Um but I don't think that's necessary. Okay. My second question, and this is f- fair warning, spoiler warning right now. If you haven't seen the film Real Steel, apologies. <laughs> yeah. Crimson and Ryder, how do you feel about the ending to the movie Real Steel? I mean, you, I'm, what's, what's the comparison? I'm confused. Well, because Crimson is in look. Real Steel, the good guy doesn't win, and it's a, it's well, a lose. It ends with a saddening loss. But, well, it's very different. Uh, it's not... Blair Witch's ending isn't bad because the heroes lose, or the main characters lose. In real deal, that it's a message, like, you don't need to win to be a winner. Right? In this, there's no message. There's no payoff. There's no yeah. payoff to end. Oh, okay. So In real steel, there's one... a payoff. So to you... Do you want okay. to see them but... get gutted? Well, no, this is, no. This is probably explained in... Um... <laughs> The session zero with my understanding of it all, yeah. but so one one had a theme and one didn't. And in this example, yeah, but even if it's not a theme, there's a payoff. What would it, okay? Then let's let's what because I think we might have a misunderstanding of what a payoff is, or, or or a mixed or different ideas of what a payoff is. What do you think could have been the payoff of this that it it wasn't? That is not my job. Finding out what <laughs> happened. We don't need to see the monster. We don't even know, need to know if it's a monster. It could be someone murdering in the woods. What if it was simply just like writing like they did at the beginning of the movie? Like it was like their stuff was found, you know. The oh, like you, like you, like you, found. like you end it the way you began. You clan, you close yeah. out with a just a, a paragraph. A paragraph. Writing. It depends what they write, but. I could say that could start that favorite, could work. What they put there, yeah. It's got to be. That's something I got to put a lot of effort and thought into. Um, but that that could potentially make it better, depending on what they put there. Like as it is right now, we don't know what happened. We don't know if it's a witch. We don't know if it's a cycle in the woods. We don't know if it's the ghost of Mister Pyre. 
We don't know if it's Bigfoot. We don't know what happened. There's no payoff to the mystery, right? But there's a mystery here. But see, the interesting thing about it, though, is that if they had concretely said, "This is what it is. This is you know." They, did, the they would. They wouldn't have to do that in the end and credits, though. They wouldn't have to well, identify no, the monster in any way. They wouldn't have to I, I, concretely give us, I yeah. guess, an identification. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, if if they gave you everything, and I'm not saying that that's you should all. You know, I don't. I'm not saying you should always not give your audience something to go off of or anything like that. But I think. I, I think we're so used to this idea that everything has to be. Um, given to us in an ending, or in its, you know, in a sense, everything, something is owed to us as for watching, uh, you know, which is not unfair in the way of, you know, because movie tickets cost, you know, like twelve, you know, fifteen dollars now. So I would kind of want to have a good experience. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is that, uh, has anybody else, has anybody here seen uh, The Sopranos all the way through? No, probably just okay, just me. I know. <laughs> Well, no, I'm just, so in the, the, the main end, or the, the infamous ending to The Sopranos, it just cuts to black for like five minutes. You don't see anything, and then that's the end of the thing. And that angered so many people when that happened. And it wasn't for any like way of, you know, it, artistically, that's like the perfect way to go. Because, you know, you don't have, you, you, you kind of have to make up what you imagine happened. But I remember, uh, I think it's, I can't remember the guy's name. I think, it, I want to say David Chase, but I could be totally wrong. So you can lamp, lampoon me in the comics. In that com- yeah, yeah, comics. <laughs> My comics. Uh, uh, was talking about how one of the issues he had with ending the series, because it was about mobsters and there was a lot of violence, you know, what have you in it. Uh, shocker to anybody who hasn't seen the Sopranos, it's about mobsters. Uh, everybody, oh, not everybody, you know, obviously it was it was a good amount of people. Uh, you know, would tell them all the time. You know, fans of the show were like, "Oh, the 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 main guy, he has to die. Like he has to be. We have, we want to see him die. We we want to see him get shot in the fucking head in front of his family and every, you know all that stuff." And he was so kind of disgusted by this want for bloodlust, you know for this character that he decided to go the opposite way and not give any sort of, you know, uh, closure as far as what they would want because he was just so disgusted by that reaction of what the people, what the audience was wanting. And I think though that it, it fits in this where it, I kind of, I think I like movies that don't give you everything because they give you they make you fill in the story, or make not make you, but you know, give you the ability to fill in and kind of have your own view. Because we all came in this movie, came out of this movie with differing opinions about almost everything in it. I'm not saying that's always good. Not every movie works for that, and you know, it's not what I'm saying. Every movie should be like, but I like the idea of having a film where you can each be right in your own personal viewpoint of where you think the movie is coming from and where you think it's about. I agree with you and, in concept. I know that you don't because I know you don't like it because it has to have a structure. It has to have a, you know, it has to fit no, a theme. It, it, it doesn't, to, it doesn't necessarily need to fit a theme to have a payoff. It just needs to have a payoff. But the payoff of this, if it was just, I'm saying if the payoff of this was it was a concrete final moment, we would not be sitting here right now. We would it would be over, be done. We wouldn't have anything to talk about. And I don't. So the think point. So the, so you so you say the point of it is to generate conversation. I don't know if that's the point of it, but I I don't I think the movie itself would be hurt if it was all at the end of it was just all said and done and there was nothing left to talk about. Okay. I don't. I don't think the. I don't think a, a a definitive payoff would have helped this movie in any way. If anything, I think it would have probably hurt it a little bit. I think by not doing that, they opened up so many more pathways for how this movie could be thought of and be presented than if they had just said everything and all the things that 
it it was it was supposed to be. I'm that's your, my. That's I, I got an example for this. Uh, okay. Which I think kind of touches on what you just said. There was so season one, episode four of Person of Interest. There is never saw a, it. Go on. Spoiler uh, warning. It's just a, it's it's a one off episode, but yeah, okay. spoiler warning. Um, so the bad guy in this was a serial rapist, mm-hmm. and our hero John at the end catches him, and John doesn't kill people generally. Uh, he kneecaps them, arrests them, and gets them arrested. Mm-hmm. Um, in this instance, it's him and the guy at a table side by side with a gun in the middle. And he has this whole talk with the guy whether or not uh, to kill him or not. If he'll regret killing him or regret letting him live. And it cuts to black at the end of this conversation. The audience doesn't know if he killed him or put him under arrest. Yeah. But based off of everything you've seen up to this point, and if you've seen the whole show and then you go back and watch it, there's definitely enough to know the character of John wouldn't kill him, but it could be argued that he did. So the grand consensus is John did not kill this man, but people could still argue otherwise because it was open. So it rewards people who knows the character by giving at least an answer that adds up and is generally acceptable. But and Crimson, leaves debate. What, what's your connection to that, to the ending of Blair Witch? Where you cannot conclude an answer. You can. And, it's, and the the, it's, it's the Blair Witch. Example, no. you, it's the Blair no, Witch. because I'm curious, there's, there's I'm the curious Mr. to you. Uh, prior what, connection of how they were killed and the house. There's multiple avenues. I'm, there's not okay. one where you could say, I'm 90% sure this is the, the answer. You can't do that in this film. No so there's I, it's, it, so to you, Crimson, it's too open ended at the end to have a definitive thought on what happened. Yes. You can have an open ending where there's a mostly correct answer, but still leave it open for yeah, you. Yeah, the Blair Witch. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, the Crimson. Blair Witch project. <laughs> Crimson, yeah, I we... am siding with Sinister on this one for the fact that I don't know any other way that they could have gone about it. That wasn't shown of what happened. All three died. They all died in that base. Well, we don't know where Josh died, but all they died in that house. The footage was found as it was said at the beginning. I I, I don't I mean, necessarily this is know anything else to go with it. But... I'm telling you why I think it is not a good payoff. And that was my answer. I, I'm because <laughs> okay. I'm well. Yeah, I I understand where you're coming from, but I listen. If we, if we want to, you know take away all the mystique obviously it was the Blair Witch that's you know that's fairly like probably 75% and there's enough there where you could argue definitively obviously there was some if not even the Blair Witch something supernatural if, if you want to even if you want to give me even more gray area there obviously and, something supernatural could have been the Blair Witch could have been the ghost of a fucking I guess pedophile murderer guy I don't really know but something supernatural. I think something... Well, looking at this now, it does look like it is currently 2v2 of Sinister and I yeah. on one side and Crimson Rider on the other. And I think one of the main focal points to kind of go with is the fact that there was no writers for this movie. And it was improv. There was a screenplay. There was a screenplay. Let's... There was a screenplay, yeah, they, yes. They, they there was a screenplay. Yeah, there was direction, yeah. On, like, who to pick on during the day or whatnot. But yeah. everything that was said wasn't written down well, like i'm sure the map was planned it wasn't just yeah. the actors are like oh we lost the map that, that had to have been a yeah planned the the, the makeup so. of this movie was planned out there wasn't any kind of you know there wasn't like oh well, the we actors shot, didn't like, make the story yeah <laughs> oh, the dots were there they drew the lines yeah yeah uh so i'm pretty sure the ending was planned and it wasn't up to the actors to make the ending well, like I said, they changed the ending at the, for, yeah. you know, like before. So anyway, you know, there's like three different endings. I haven't seen what the other ones are, if they've ever been shown. I don't know. But, uh, but the fact of the matter is they didn't use any of those. Yeah, the this, they used this one, and this was the one that people responded to. I I understand where, where Crimson 
and uh, writer are coming from. I, I can see their point of view, especially they're from a more uh, script oriented background than they, you know, it's, and I, I understand that it can be viewed. I know you're not saying this, but I know, I understand it can be viewed as lazy to sort of have an open ended ending that doesn't have a necessarily a solid or definitive payoff that you could, you know, say one way or another. But I, I, I do, th I think this movie works with it better than if it had just, you know, been laid out for everybody. I, cause I, and again, not just even just for like conversation's sake, but just for the nature of you as an audience member are kind of left in the same sort of shoes as the, you know, participants in this movie where you really are questioning most of the time what is happening and what's going on. Okay. You're putting yourself in. So is not not, Okay, so I guess my question for yeah. you would be because now I'm curious. Well, I should have shut up. I should have stopped talking. <laughs> is oh it? My God damn it! Is it time for probing? Is it a fault of the film then that we have to solve its problems or interpret the solutions to, it, or the, to interpret the answers? Pretty much is what we as an audience are left to do. Is that a problem? I don't think it's, a, it's their intentions. So I don't think that's a really problem because we've kind of done that when we covered men. Yeah. Well, there's a lot. Yes, but, not, but you know, men what had... Was happening. It was interpretations, and we all had different interpretations of what it was. And I feel like this, this is a little more narrowed because we know what's going on. Well, the payoff in men is that she got over her grief. We, we don't know yeah. how her grief was manifested or what happened, but there was still a payoff at the end. And I feel the payoff in this is that the Blair Witch got three more victims. What, is, what was up with? But what was up with Jeffrey? What What was the deal with all that stuff? Uh, we talked about Jeffrey. <laughs> it's, Jeffrey. It, there's a lot. There's all again. There's a lot not stated in Men that you know. It seemed like, like nobody seemed to have open ended stuff. The, the, there just needs to be. A I just, I, I guess, I just feel like, I feel like the oh. the the payoff that you're wanting Person, you for this seems needs. kind. Of, yeah, needs. Needs. So, in your opinion, for your enjoyment, oh. it needs to be there. I gave an example of personal interest. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and I. And I, 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 as I, as I was curious how that connected to this, and the payout in that is you know the character of what they would do especially with the, the future of what continued and what's shown beforehand. And I'm curious, and I was curious how you're, do, do you think one of these three, Josh, Heather, or Mike could have escaped? Do you think one of them could have killed the witch? Do, do you think it's so Heather open could have ended? dropped the camera and ran away because she was afraid of Mike. <laughs> uh, and was just never seen again. Who knows? It's. I think it's just. Does again, it, she was terrified. Does it? Do I need closure with the story? No. Do you want it? Yes. Yeah, but that doesn't affect my objective scale, does it? I. That doesn't affect my objective scale, though. No. Well, yeah, but it'll affect your subjective scale. Don't, yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry so, about that. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. It's such a fun conversation. I I want to hear the comment sections <laughs> yeah. of this one. Yeah. Something else to go with Sinister that makes this movie such a discussion point is when it came out, not only was it one of its first of its kind with the whole handheld footage that really changed it from any other movie in theaters or around that time, but also with the ending of how it's being discussed, every other movie, you know, solid ending, oh, it was pretty, you know, fine, good, loved it, hated it, whatever. This one is a very mixed bag open-ended because for the longest time, the joke of this movie is the ending sucks. And the ending but does then, suck. The other but... hand thinks it fits so nicely to what is already shown. It, I, okay. At the end of the day here, we're saying this ending sucks, right? We're saying, you know, we're, or the, the argument here is, does the ending suck? Or not? Is it, is it a affordable payoff for this movie? Yeah. As I and stated you know, earlier, it's you a know what the Jack greatest Fox. thing about this ending is the greatest thing. What it's other so ending you? Yeah, what other ending have you talked about? Has been talked about for about thirty years about you know that sucks. I think a movie that a movie that's ending is talked about for thirty years doesn't suck. It just has so much potential. 
That's the other thing. That's so the, is, is, the ar- is the argument that then that it's is it the argument that it's, it's like wasted cool potential? Stars. No, but... the argument here is that like you are what we what we've been doing here is we've been I've been asking you questions. Springs has been asking you questions. You've been asking us questions, uh, and we've been trying to figure out. We're using what this to you... ex- we're using this to explore more about each other, not yeah. the film. No, no, well, sinister. I, was, I don't. I don't mean to, but I'm going to cross the line slightly to their side and just state that it was not. I don't think it was the intention of the directors or the editing for this film to have a bad ending. I don't think it's a bad. I'm not saying it's a bad ending. I'm just saying that's the. Uh, no, no, that's not yeah. what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, at this point, like in time and after the movie came out, people call it like you know this infamous bad ending to a movie. But I think when it was being made and the ending they chose, it was not designed to have a bad ending. That's what I'm saying. Nobody, no nobody really, nobody, yeah, I mean, nobody makes a movie with a purposely bad ending, unless they're really trying to make a. I, like I, they don't. Nobody, nobody can make it. It's very. Uh, I will say they they, I, they purposefully make bad endings, but they don't intentionally make bad endings because usually would, the the purpose I, is within their vision. What I was gonna say is is that if you if you if you've ever watched a movie that's supposed intentionally is supposed to be bad. It's very. It's not at all like watching a bad movie most of the time. Is what I was trying to say there, but that's ah, nothing to do with. Yeah, it, it, it's very. It's more difficult to make a bad movie on purpose than it is to make a bad movie by accident. Is what I'm trying to say. But um, uh, no, what I was going to say is that uh, I'm not saying that something being talked about for 30 years makes it good, but I'm also not going to say that it makes it bad either. What I was trying to say was that if this movie had just had whatever payoff that you are wanting out of it or whatever thing that you think needs to be there that you didn't find there, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter to anyone other than to yourself. And that's how it should be. That's how it, you know, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, which is a fan fantastic fucking thing and that's why we have a fucking podcast that's what i'm trying to say i sound really angry right now but i'm, I'm trying to be positive here Passion. and the the other and the other side of that coin is this movie doesn't have what would generally in hollywood be considered a payoff at the end and it made a shit ton of fucking money and it was lauded by a fucking roger ebert of all fucking people gave it a four out of four stars was reviewed very well by a lot of credited people. And I think at the end of the day, it was made for like, you know, roughly 500, you know, like 300,000. And I think that's fucking amazing that a movie that has a, what would not be considered a Hollywood ending, did so well and connected with so many people. And we're still talking about it all these years later. And I think inherently that this movie might not be for everybody, but it's not a bad movie, and it doesn't have a bad ending. It has a different kind of ending, and it has a different, you know, vibe to it than a lot of movies that came out at the time. And I, I think to <sighs> want something out of it that is there, isn't there for you, or isn't you're not finding it there, is your own, you know, it's your own hang-up, and it's your own thing. I'm not going to, you know, fight you on it too much. What I'm just trying to do is just trying to illustrate that the ending here is the ending I think it needs. And I think the ending here is what makes it iconic and what makes it kind of stand above a lot of the other freaking found footage films is that like most of them kind of had whatever was a payoff and described everything in more detail. They had can- yeah, cannibals ate all the people. We found the footage or, you know, the ghost was always there and it's still a little girl or whatever the fuck, you know, it doesn't really fucking matter. But the fact that it's so open-ended, it works better because it it leaves it up to your imagination. There's enough there where you could kind of have a concrete answer, but not enough there where you're you know immediately pushed out because your answer doesn't fit. You know, it's good. It's a good ending. All right. Um, 
any counterpoints to that comment, or should we go into overall summaries and ratings? I don't really. Oh, Sinister I, Boy's a dick. I He's don't really. Uh, I don't know if that needed counter. That was just a statement. I, th okay. This is a statement. That was just I don't, a statement. That was, yeah. a, that was a rising statement. That was me. Okay. I mean, I have whiskey but, sours in. I mean, saying, if you want me to add you, if, words, not counter, but follow up. If you, I mean, my only counter slash follow up that I could possibly think of in this scenario is that I I didn't come here needing a specific ending or wanting a specific ending. I know. It just lacks this. You. It just lacks this aspect, which I agree is traditionally there. Um. But from what it looks like to me, it looks like you value the conversation that the ending, the infamy that the ending has generated, rather the ending itself. I like the ending. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you know, I, you I have. Like, a, okay, I mean, not, yeah, even, not even okay. in the. Not, okay, so here's, I don't even, not so, even so here's the, my follow-up question. All the other stuff to like. Okay, right, so here's my follow-up question then. What? Yeah. In particular, about the ending, do you like excluding everything external? Excluding everything external, so none of the none of the money, none of the prostitutes, none of the, all that stuff, just the ending itself. Yeah, um, totally from none the, of the behind the scenes stuff. Nothing else. What is the what is the nothing that makes the ending infamous? Because I agree, it is a very infamous ending because of all the conversation it generates, but that does not inherently make the ending good. So what do you value about the ending irrelevant to everything external? That stands out positively to you. Okay, so at what point are we cutting off? Like, where, where does the infamy... Because if I say, like, I would not, not seen a movie that ended in that way before, is that suddenly copping out of, like, I mean, okay, okay that, so that that's being what, it, this being I don't, I this don't being a getting drawn here. That's what I'm trying to find. This out. Be, this what, being what part are you calling the ending? This being a uh, so like this being a unique found footage film, and that like it generates a because of that, it's it was such a unique thing. It's never been done before. It pushes the boundary of that genre forward. That's fine, but that's I treat that as external because it's them pushing the genre forward, not exactly what the ending well, the of the story being told, quote-unquote, is accomplishing. I, so I think... The infamy... I think most... Sorry. Okay, so the... I guess to answer your question, the infamy... Uh, where I mean in this in the definition is that all... Infamy is just some another word for me to sum up what externally is happening. So... Okay. My, question, a... my question to you is... Yeah. Anything, anything external of that, of the film, what did you like about the ending? Okay. So, here's a general thing to start out with. Um, I think in most movies, most or, or a good amount of movies, most amount of movies could have an epilogue, right? Could have, you know, you follow these characters, you know, 20, you know, like, Oh, she decided to go with the poor guy, or sure, and all that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying those are bad. I'm just saying generally. Yeah, you generally, know, you, generally like, there is a closure. <laughs> there is generally, and there is a closure of some kind. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah. there's a closure of some kind, and there you could want to see what happens after that closure, or what have you. You know, but it's enough where you don't need it, but you could. Uh, I think one of the cool things about this, and I'm I'm not going to necessarily say it's about found footage in general, because I think, at least to my knowledge, I haven't seen some of the other ones that came out before this one, with the exception of maybe a little, I've seen a little bit of Cannibal Holocaust, but there was another one that came out, I think, a year before this one that I can't remember the name of. But, was it Cloverfield? Uh, no, no, Cloverfield came after, which I, okay. I hate, but... Uh, um, you which most did, people. Yeah, I, which... Did a similar thing, I guess, to this one, but did it worse. But uh, so what I like about not uh, I'll lead up to the, the the scene leading up to the ending or the the scene with the ending uh, is them, you know, running through the house and everything with it. Both have cameras and the audio's unsynced and it doesn't match up, which is, you know, cool. But that's not the ending itself. Um, you're following multiple person persons. Uh, persons here you're following mike and heather and in each instance you were 
taking on essentially with the 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 use of the camera are becoming the eyes of the movie, right? That's how you know a camera generally works. Is you're watching whatever's happening. And We're seeing through their not, eyes. Yeah, you are. The camera is the eyes of the audience. So in this particular situation with found footage, you have the eyes of the audience being the cast members themselves, which is you know, which was the big thing with the found footage, and you know, it works in this movie a lot because you get to kind of be in the movie. And I think the thing that works about the ending is you're following, you know, and you're kind of in the movie, uh, and it's working in a way because you're 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 forced to follow, even though you know what's happening and you know what's probably going to happen here, but you're forced anyways, and you're in it. And with the ending of how it ends, where you're still you're unsure of what's going on, you're in exactly the same situation as the cast members are in this. You don't know what's going on, but you. You have an idea of what you think is about to happen, but you don't know how it's going to go down. You don't know what's going to, you know, occur other than the basics of you're probably either going to be injured or you're going to have trouble or whatever. And it ends with these these characters, which have become you, the audience. It ends with them pretty much, you know, you can assume, assume I'm saying, but most assuredly dead. And that's where you cut the movie and that's where you end it. You end it. You end it on that note of the movie being over, and the characters that you were inhabiting dying. What I'm hearing from Sinister here, to hopefully to summarize, is it? But the immersion of handheld horror is far more intense and connected to the individual of audience than any other movie because it's set camera crew. And Is well, and especially well, yeah, and especially with, you know, even though like horror movies love to have twenty plus parts of you know trilogies and the series of the films. I don't know what I don't know what number like Friday the Thirteenth or Halloween's on, but you know it's up there. Okay. But with the with the characters themselves, or the protagonists of the movies, which are you know generally the drunken teenagers and what have you. You don't really get an epilogue with those people, generally, with a few exceptions of, like, the final girl stuff. You don't really... It's... Their story's over the minute the movie ends, or the minute they die. And in this situation, the movie ends when they die because they're dead, and therefore your connection to this footage is dead with them because it's over, it's done. The movie started with them, it ended with them. Yeah. There's no, there's no one to pass it to. There's... And there's... Granted... Like I've I've given you know to Crimson and Ryder here, th- that necessarily doesn't make it a a strong payoff, but it is a fine there there is a fine fine the finality of it there's a you know a final, it's over, and whatever you want to get out of it, is up to you, and whatever you don't want to get out of it is up to you, and that's fine and that's fair I'm not you know. I, I, I'm okay. arguing it only for the sake of I'm trying to make you, you know see a little bit of where I'm coming from, but I'm not okay. trying to necessarily say you're wrong. I, the, you're not wrong, but you're. But I'm I'm arguing with you for the sake of. I I think it's it's both fair to criticize it, but I think it's a little bit of. I think the criticism for it. Is kind of only scraping the surface, and is from a more of a personal, standpoint than against the movie itself. But again, m- my standpoint of it is also an opinion because, you know, it's uh, that's what it is. It's an opinion. There's no, I think, we, I think it, we as people love happy endings and we as people love strong payoffs because we like things to end when they end so we, you know, can have the emotional payoff of it. And I think when, and I like, but I, I like when stuff doesn't have like a good ending or a you know a a, a a written out for me on a napkin you know ending that's me and that's you know my thing okay and so when you say good ending i'm assuming you mean that in just like the theme of good not necessarily articulating good if that makes yes. sense okay no i love movies that have have good 
I don't love movies that have good endings. They have to be bad endings. They have to have no payoff. With no, I'm. Sorry. No, 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 I, I'm, uh, only, yeah, I'm only yeah. asking for clarification because I, I want to. I just want to. I just want to. Ending. I just want to. Good ending. I'll say a Hollywood ending. Hollywood okay. ending, which is positive ending. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that's that's just me. I okay. Uh, so, I, I guess just to make sure I understand where you're coming from, because I do want to understand. So, what you value in this ending, isolated of everything else, is the handheld horror thing aspect, like Springs suggested. Yeah. The more immersion. It's more immersive, yeah. Okay. That was that was pretty and much it, the crux yeah. of my question. I'm assuming yeah, it's I'm assuming more... it's similar for you, Sprinks, as well. Um, that is one aspect of it, but not necessarily entirety because the handheld is throughout the movie. Um, I think it would be different if like the last scene is like an actor picking up a camera and the, the whole last scene is handheld to make a difference of strength to say the handheld helped with the last scene. But the fact that it was throughout the movie, I don't think that's the sole purpose that can be rested on for a handheld. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do agree with Sinister being that it's a horror handheld and it's the point of view of the actors. It is more immerse, uh, immersive for the viewer to be watching, simply for the fact they don't know, they don't have control of where it's going. Yeah. Like, you know, in your mind, you'd be frightened or you know, petrified to go down those stairs to see something. But this character's already going down the stairs, so you you can't stop what's coming. Um, as for everything else, like if you saw like the whole body of an actor, and you saw the villain, say like Halloween. And the struggle that's going on, you can see it all going on. You don't know what's going to happen next, but you can see the whole setting and what and things around. For this ending, you've never been in this. It's this house has never been shown before. We don't know what the witch looks like. We don't know what the basement entails. You know, it's just more um, mystery that necessarily the viewer doesn't want to know of due to frightening, but also wants to know because it's unknown. If that helps. Okay. And. Well, I guess to follow up with that, as I'm just going to ask the same question to you, Springs, because you said you like the ending. So, ex- uh, you know, excluding everything external is, is, is what the answer you just gave me, what you would answer to that question? Partially, what one thing that Sensor didn't really, well, did touch on, but something to me that makes this ending that I liked is the fact that it's different. But that's it, ex- so that, but that's more external, not necessarily. So, it, I like. I guess it does fit with what Sinister said of this movie entails three characters, and that's it. You don't see the parents. You don't see. I, I think it would have been worse if it cut to the parents, like mourning the deaths or a funeral or something. So it's just the characters start and the character ends, and this is where the characters end. And I think that's fitting because when the the first shot is literally just turning on a camera and looking at Heather, like Josh and Heather in a room. So the end of just the camera, not necessarily dying off, but just ending. Um, so I think it's a good uh, bookend fitting to it. Alrighty, that's that's. I mean, that's all I got for questions, anyway. So does the crimson have anything, or is he going to go in his hole? Um, no, I feel like any question I had asked would just bring circles. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so like a loop like of some south. sort? That's yeah. what happened. We gotta go mm-hmm. north, fellas. Yeah, we gotta go yeah. north. We gotta go to the house. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. So, uh, Ryder, should we start with you of your summary? Uh, sure. Uh, as I said, my, my history with this film is fairly... Uh, it's very little, because uh, it wasn't really on my... I watched it a couple times when I was a kid, but it was never really... It's never really a movie that was on my radar for it to stick with me uh, for longer than uh, some other horror movies. Um, and obviously, uh, I'm I'm with Crimson in the camp. I don't particularly like the ending, but that's mostly subjective in that uh, where I, I it doesn't have anything I personally look for, I suppose. Um I do think it lacks all the same. It still lacks uh, a completion note or two because otherwise it wouldn't be as infamous. Um, 
overall, uh, I think the film is okay. I uh, I don't remember uh, having watched it again recently for the first time. As I said, I didn't really enjoy myself as I did the first few times I watched this movie. And I think it's just because I I knew it was going to happen, so I was more uh, I was more looking at into where things could go wrong, and I found myself spending more time trying to come up with explanations uh than i was thinking about the actual film um i think because of that i i i think it's i don't think it's a particularly great movie though i recognize that it pushes the handheld genre forward um but i i think it's okay so all right and um Next, uh, let's go to Sinister next. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I hadn't seen this movie in a very long time, and I so I'd kind of gotten into like you know the the, uh, the 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 personality on it of the you know it was kind of like and it because I didn't like any of the movies that really came out after it that were you know similar style like the paranormal activities and all that you know and the hauntings or whatever or the exorcism of whoever you know so I did I always felt like they were just it was too much of a just like oh well here's a ghost story we have let's make it be found footage so we can kind of cash in on that wave it didn't really feel like it went hand in hand with it it was like, here's a story, let's make it found footage after the fact, and it doesn't really work. You kind of have to have that idea going in for it to, I think, really be effective. Um, and this one was, and you know, and it, granted, they used a very similar ad campaign to Cannibal Holocaust, where they pretended that you know the whole cast was all real and the whole cast had gone missing, died or whatever, which is you know great for box office. Uh, you know, make a make a realistic snuff film. Uh, but so I, yeah. So I, but after rewatching it, I was I was you know more impressed with it I think than I was when I was a kid. Especially after you know working on films and things, and you know realizing how kind of similar it was to you know real actually like making something and then having stuff go wrong. Granted, things go really really wrong in this one. <laughs> never, I never was stranded in the woods with the murderous, you know, spirit or something. So, wasn't that familiar? But so yeah, I think it was. It was definitely better than I remembered it being as a kid and or a younger man. And I think it. It's definitely. I think still probably out of the sea of kind of misfires and half baked ideas, it's probably the only one that I ever actually really, one of the or one of the few that actually really worked. Okay. Sure. Um, I, I, as I said, I think this is my third time watching the movie, and to me, each time I see it, I not only catch things I hadn't seen before, but it just seems to strengthen um, what this movie is to me. Um, solely, I think, through my experience of you know any other movie and um, history through film of what I've and taken from experience and whatnot, but I th every time I see this movie, I think it just gets better. Uh, I think it's... It, it's still talked about today. This movie stood out for its time when it came out. The As Ryder said, it strengthened the handheld um, film aspect, which there isn't that, that many films on, um, but it also has the ending that so many people talk about, which it, it's not the only thing, the only... Um, ending like that that gets talked about but it is one that is still talked about today especially you know since we're still on the podcast uh talking about it um i think it's creative in the way that the actors were somewhat manipulated into thinking what was real and what wasn't which changes the aspect of to me how to view their acting um how to change the view on the writing since all dialogue was improv how to change um uh, the cinematography, since it was handheld, so the cinematography would be on, I guess, through the actors themselves, which is an interesting connection. Um, it, it has just differences than any other movie, but it's still connected as a movie, 
rather than classifying it as a documentary because the documentary they're going over is initially fake done by the directors. Um, so it, it's just a, it's a different approach to a creative outlet of film, which makes it stand out to me. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I'm sure if I watch this movie again, I would enjoy it maybe a tidbit more possibly. Um, but then again, on the other hand, due to what is being said, um, even with ratings, we go over why um, it might stay even or even go slightly down. Who knows? Uh, and with that, I'll pass it to Crimson. All right. Well, I've, I spent this time trying to think of how I would change the ending, since that was something Sinister brought up earlier, like what yeah, else could have come been on. done. Come on, be a creative, and, Crimson. Come on. Well, I was thinking of like, Prince's example of Real Steel being a negative ending, technically. A downer ending. I, I went to Rogue One, where that's a negative ending. Where mm-hmm. oh. the cast die. Spoiler. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm like, they all die, but there's still a payoff as in they succeeded in their mission. And then, another spoiler. One, two, three. Halo Reach uh, also has a negative end, where Almost everybody dies. Uh, J- 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 June. Uh, June. June. What's it? June. Sorry, uh, almost June everybody out, dying doesn't mean as much as late. everyone dying. Sorry. We didn't get a conclusion to June in this, so oh, it doesn't really matter in that regards. But uh, all of the characters essentially die, but the payoff on that is they also succeed in their mission. So I feel like something they could have done, we established, uh, that, at least actually, personally, I think, text. I was going to say, technically they did complete their mission because they made a documentary, so uh, well, that's invalid. That's what I was about to, to yeah. say. Well, no, <laughs> they, what I was going to say was, we, we talked about how a text at the end could potentially save it. Um, and I think that's something they could have done. They could have said uh, the footage was found, given to the family, and the family thought it would be good to show their finished product to the world. Boom. They kind of already did that in the beginning, though. That's that's no. one issue. They yeah, they, say, they say no, they, they don't. They they say yeah, the footage is found. They could say they could add the addition of the family. Is what he's saying. That's, yeah, they could say the families said they wanted their kids' product to be done, and it was published or whatever, put out in the world. And I think that would have been more satisfying. Yeah. Crimson yeah. would it would have still worked if if the last like say title thing just said rest in peace josh heather and mike to indicate that they know they're dead or do you think that's too loose probably too loose maybe in dedication to in dedication to okay but that would uh, still for crimson i mean that would imply that this came out as an actual released product of theirs, not just outside the movie. So, I mean, I guess I, that could technically be better. I kind of like my idea of it better, but <laughs> I think that could potentially work. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm just trying to find that, that uh, I, I guess, line for you. I just like, don't, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm looking for it's the not payoff. Bad. And I think the movie coming out would be a decent enough payoff without showing the monster and keeping their deaths and keeping the POV of the camera like you guys like. And I, I agree. Keep, keeping it's everything keep as intended. This is keeping everything as intended and just adding a single couple lines of, of text at the end that could wrap the bow a little better. I don't know. Yeah, so I, I just think with the whole, like, the release of the movie, it kind of just restates... It restates too much of what the intro thing did, but just, like, make it more specific. Which I don't really... I don't... I, I mean... If I watch it, I don't think I'd, I'd have the same take. But that's just me. Or I would feel, right. I would just feel... I would just feel Talk like it would just be... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying that... For me, specifically, I feel like it would just be... Retreading and kind of take away any of the... Power of the, you know, last scene. But that's me. Um, All right. I guess my general son was that I didn't even do that. Uh, it yeah. Was, oh, yeah. It was... It was decent uh, it was okay i'm kind of with writer where it was kind of just all right and 
uh, it was interesting. My opinion on the characters kept changing because um, I liked Josh and Heather in the beginning. Not so much Mike because he just was pretty whiny most of the time. And then it flip flopped to where Josh was getting quite annoying. Some mo moments more justifiable than others, but overall justifiable. Still found him annoying personally, though. Well, uh, Mike got better, as we saw with his one on one with Heather and stuff. Barry was more level headed. It was interesting to see how my opinions kept shifting with these characters. And in the middle, I didn't like Heather because she uh, <laughs> was so uh, confident in herself, even though she's clearly wrong. And everyone else kept calling her on it. But, I mean, and ending aside, because we talked to death about that, I, I think it was okay. That's All it. right. And with that, we'll go on to the ratings, um, starting classically with the Dracula in the corner. Thank you, Belmont. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I'll, I'll do my subjective one uh, first. So I... Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I like the movie. Um Overall, don't let any of that argument fool you. You like the movie. Yeah, I I like the movie overall. Uh, I like I said, I I've seen this a couple times as a kid, and I've never, I never hated it. Uh, but uh, as I said, this time it was more the the experience for me was more. I was trying to explain away the movie's problems, so I don't think I enjoyed this as much as I used to when I was a kid. Um. That's not to say it's a, not a good movie, uh, but overall, it's, just, uh, it's probably subjectively is probably just five. I it's kind of average on the horror scale for me. I didn't particularly enjoy watching it. It was just, um, I more enjoyed the. Uh, I guess it's not really the journey. It's more of the concept that this film is trying to do. Um, uh, my objective is going to be also fairly close. Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a six. Uh, I think the movie does a lot uh, to keep everything feeling very, very real for the characters. Uh, a good majority of the time ending aside because obviously that's where we have our point of difference. Um, but I think the characters are extremely they're they're real they feel very real and most of the time they are well realized but they do uh but they do have problems as we've brought up um and um yeah i i think a six is a fair uh point on the objective scale so i will pass this off to the host sprinks oh Sweet. Okay. Whoa. A little out of order. Fun. Um, okay. I'll start with my object. Well, I'll start with my subjective. I'll go with that pattern too. Um, so subjective. If this was my first time watching the movie, uh, and then podcast, it certainly would be a much lower score. But I have a slight guilty pleasure, uh, which I believe we've discussed in session zero that one of my guilty pleasures is a movie called project almanac which is handheld um i somewhat like the handheld movies i know it makes a lot of people nauseous at times but i don't necessarily get c or car sick um so i enjoy it in that aspect i enjoy how real this movie is how, how much it feels i know these three actors know the project they were doing but the fact that their names in the films are their actual names. The fact that they believe the story is real. They don't know what was going to occur to them during the nights. Um, they, their reactions to each other was pretty spot on. I believe something that strengthens this movie is the imagination of oneself um, is to add to the, the fear Never, never seen what the Blair Witch looks like or any like indications. Nothing like from signs when the alien walks by on the TV screen. Not, not, nothing like that. The fact that you don't know what it looks like. So in your head, 
you try to picture what it could look like or how big it is or anything in that regard, I think is adds more to the fear level of this movie and to the suspense. Um, it also helps that all the people they interviewed didn't have a set look on what it looked like. It was all different. Um, because I believe if they all, if they somewhat connected and they were, they all kind of knew the, the overall gist of what it looked like, then in your head, that's what you could picture, even though everyone's interpretation of what that would be could be different. Um, so I think the, the imagination spectrum that it gives to the viewer is a huge strength in this movie, um, which I really enjoy. And the fact that the ending is very different, I enjoy, um, because it's different than, as Sinister said, Hollywood mo movies, or Hollywood endings. Um, I think... Some parts, though, I will say that are a bit weak is the beginning and I think the first day are a bit slow, um, yeah. which is fine. But for overall, how some of the days are very short, um, especially for the movie being an, a relatively short movie, and some of the days are shorter than others to kind of build the tension, I think there was more dead calmness at the beginning that could have built tension a little more so to get to the end it didn't build till a good chunk i guess into the movie um but overall subjective i'm going to give it an eight uh because i quite enjoyed it i, I like this movie objectively it's a bit difficult for the fact that there is no no crew there's no behind the scenes crew of anything so the um, costume department is themselves, which they stuck to it. They were in the same outfits through all eight days of shooting. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't necessarily point it out, but I believe we all saw, we all saw the same movie. So we all saw that throughout, uh, there was no costume changing. Um, the camera men and women were the actors themselves. So anything through that was put onto them, which I think fit because they were, shown as filmmakers so their takes on angle shown which was you know some zoom ups of twigs or leaves in the ground or you know shaky cam i think all fit naturally to the the story of what was being told um there was that one shot that i pointed out which i don't know if josh was out of the, out of the three of them josh was kind of set for cameraman for the documentary so i think he may have had the most cinematography experience or aimed at um, which might be why I like that shot the most. I do not know, though, if they're actually, like, set actor for Heather, set cinematographer, set audio. I don't know, um, since they all kind of took on those roles. I think the acting is very interestingly take on acting, since the fact that they knew they were acting, but also the fact that they didn't know what was coming across, so it felt more real and natural. Um, I think... Uh, it's it's I think it only strengthens for the fact that it's handheld that there's no score in the background. It could have been editorial put in for a score, but I think that would have definitely taken away from the suspense of handheld and and the realism of it. So that one's that, that that's kind of on the line of the, on the fence of me of whether or not it would have been strengthened with music or not. Uh, but overall all these all these aspects to it, and the things that they could have done better, I guess, if they did have more crew to get more um, help with the project. And if maybe if the directors, I do like the fact that directors kept them in the unknown of not knowing what was going to happen that night. Because the directors would go out there with boom boxes and blast the, the noises while they're trying to sleep and, you know, take away their, their slumber and less food and just get them more uncomfortable throughout the shooting, which really came across as the, the real of it. Um, but objectively, I'm going to give it a 7.5. And I get to choose who to pass to next. I'm going to pass it to Crimson. Let's save Sinister oh. for last. All right. Uh, so... I'll start with my objectives. It was it was good acting. It was pretty darn good acting. I, I praised Heather several times throughout this. And Josh and Mike did well. I'm sure they blew out their throats sometimes in this. <laughs> uh, with all the screaming. Um, all the yelling for I, Josh. Yeah, Josh. 
uh, I liked, like Spring said, how the handheld look, they did a good job. And in the beginning, we talked about like home video vibes, and uh, I think they captured that well. Whether or not they have experience around the camera or not, I don't know, but I think it worked in whichever case. And the ending, I will just take half a point from for objective because I, I do think in story writing there has to be a conclusion of payoff and we've debated and I, I don't think you have one uh, so I think objectively it doesn't fulfill a normal story uh, and everything else I, I think works the, the times where something went wrong like at night or the, the map was bad. That was not good. That could have been explained way better, as in just the witch took it and that's it. Or uh, someone dropped it and lost it. Or later down the line, where some, they're mad at each other and Mike just rips out of her hands and throws it in the river or something. Him just kicking it off screen or something, I thought was terrible. But overall... Objectively, I think a seven is pretty good. I think they they achieved what they wanted out of it. That was good. Subjectively, so I generally give a six to a movie I'll probably watch again. The ending left a bad taste in my mouth, so I think four and a half is probably good subjectively for me. I agree with Sprinks so that the beginning was a bit slow. I don't know if the shorter nights had to be really longer. I felt like they kept the suspense keeping those short because I feel like they would just keep treading on the same thing over and over again if they uh, prolonged the days, even though this is already a short film. So I, I think four and a half subjectively. It, it, was, it was okay. To, but, uh, I won't probably watch this ever again. And Sinister. Uh, I'll give it a seven. <laughs> Short and sweet. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, no follow up, Sinister. Just, just the. Uh... <laughs> Are you kidding me? I've talked for like two hours okay. on this. Uh, <laughs> no, you can be there. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our uh, that's our podcast episode of our Halloween uh, special. Yeah. Uh, the first one. We got another one coming next week. Um, and it'll just be the two parts, but that was our episode on the Blair Witch Project. Yeah, that was uh, quite a bit of fun, I think. Um, I think it was a bit of fun. I, I had the yeah. most fun with the, the 2v2 talk we had. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... All right. Well, as always, you can find us on uh, Google Podcasts, Amazon, CastBox, Pocket Casts, Anchor, and Spotify. I think that was all. Oh of yeah, them. Pocket Cast. That's new. We can be found on That's stuff. Yeah, and at least of this recording. That's yeah, new. and all over the interwebs. Yeah, and as always, uh, you feel free to follow us on our socials. We're on all the major sites, uh, as we do. Um, as always, I am your neighborhood vampire geeky writer who happens to like witches. I'm Crimson I'm, Maroon. I'm a character called the Creature from the Sinister Lagoon. And I'm Sprinks, and I need a, a flea bath. And a shave. <laughs> nah, a little bit of shave. A little scruffy. Yeah. And we will uh, we'll catch you next time. Later, everybody. Toodaloo. Bye. Bye. Bye.